we are live in episode four, the final episode of uh, Ravnica Nights. Uh, we are here with uh, all our buddies, um, good old Isaac, Josh, the DM, and Mark with a baby. Mark had a baby in between episodes. How fucking crazy is that? Well, Mark didn't have a baby. Mark's wife had a baby. All right, whatever. Mark Fuck off. It says, yeah. Mark, Mark didn't help make the baby. Though. Listen here, I'm a seahorse. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you know how like they're always like talking like you know, oh yeah, we're pregnant or we're expecting like um no you're not. Oh, One person uh, is pregnant. No I mean, I mean we are expecting. <laughs> I also hate the phrase expecting as if like, oh, you know, we're thinking it could be a baby, but it might be like a horse. I don't know. Yeah. It could be a boat. Literally a goblin. <laughs> Alrighty. So I'm going to crank up some incredibly nerdy soundtrack uh, shenanigans. In the meantime, uh, Josh, I think we're all set to go, buddy. Okay, cool. Take so, us away, uh, oh, Dungeon Master. Welcome back. Hello. Oh, that is uh, Ravnica Knights. Uh, session number, I want to say we're on five or six now. It is four. Oh, no. This is number four. Four, that's it. Four. Uh, the one where Tyler dies. Uh-huh. Uh, Miniseries. Yeah, I thought, so, this, I thought um, this was Mark's Vengeance episode, where we killed him. I told Tyler in the group chat I was going to kill him for taking me out the other day, so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> for, uh, no, so... Can, can, can I get some context weeks, to that? Uh, it's been a couple weeks. Okay. Uh, oh, I made a shitty April Fool's joke, and Tyler didn't take it well. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Kicked him out of the group chat, the ultimate exclusion. He got so upset about it, he posted it on our fraternity Facebook page. Oh yeah, so it could be eternally <laughs> memorialized, your fucking arrogance. In your anger, you struck her down. Um, anyway, let's, let's get on it. See, it's been a couple weeks. Yeah, so it's been a couple weeks Damn. since uh, we last met, and since your characters met IRL. Um, uh, last time we met, we pulled off a crazy bank heist. Uh, there were ghosts involved. There were uh, there were puzzles that were some were solved and some not so solved. Uh, Bark. We finally figured out kind of what was going on and got a glimpse into. Some stuff that may be coming up in the future. Uh, you, you know, you met some important characters, uh, namely Lavinia and Tessa, uh, two of the leaders from, respectively, the Azorius and the Orzov guilds. Um, pretty high up. So Lavinia is actually second in uh, second in charge to the Living Guild Pact, who is Jace, who hasn't been around for a while. People don't really know where he is. Uh, he's been a wall, uh, and they have kind of hired you on as helpers. They have told you of kind of this disaster coming to Ravnica that they don't know exactly what's going to happen, just that it's going to be bad. And they have given you a list of names of people. Um, so just real quick, um, it's been a couple weeks. Do you guys think that maybe, uh, is there anything that your characters might have done in that time? Um, you know, what have you been up to? How, how long? It's been a couple oh, like weeks. a couple weeks. Yeah. Mm, probably read a book or two. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I could I could be uh you you, you reading you know uh, cur- several books. Reading book. Vulcan's Vulcan's pretty good at reading, I think. <laughs> um, Nax would have uh. Nax would have caught up with Daz after his prison release. Cause... Sure, yeah. You... Go ahead. Yeah, you, you, you know you gotta catch up with your friend. Uh, he's been locked away for a while, so... Mm-hmm. Also took care of her puppies. <laughs> took care of her puppies. I think at this point, uh, Mars there would start to... Like, he hasn't had a whole lot of success recently with his... Uh, looking for his cure and everything so he probably would have finally followed up on some leads into some Golgari territory to try to find some more exotic uh, fauna there sure why don't you let's see here hmm why don't you give me either a medicine roll or an investigation roll or a nature roll actually you can give me one of those three 
Okay. You said medicine. Either in medicine, nature, or investigation. Okay, let me look at what I'm gonna do. Okay, medicine sounds good. Okay. Medicine, and that is a 21. Hey. Okay, cool. So, uh, you have traveled down into the Golgari territory where you have talked to some people, and um, they, they are more knowledgeable about your disease than some of the uh, higher-ups would be, and you've learned some more about how what it's based from and what it might cause in the future. So basically what it is is uh, your disease is almost like a form of degeneration over time. It is based on a, uh, a spore, actually, uh, that comes from the underground. So um, at some point, you or a family member could have been exposed to it. What's really unique about it is that uh, a lot of doctors get confused about it because it seems like it Anybody might be a generation. Can... Anybody yeah. else can be popping? Yeah. Yeah, there's some oh, oh, Sorry. I'm trying to get my charger in. It's me. It's done yeah, now. I was like, God, oh, man. Dang, man. Also, can, can, I, can, I just make a, can I just make a note about this disease real quick? Yeah. If you are a loved one has been diagnosed with mesothelioma... <laughs> <laughs> You may be entitled to financial compensation. Mesothelium is a rare cancer. It's a rare cancer. Continue, please. I'm sorry. I hate you. I, I hate myself, too. It's fine. Um, so what you've learned is that uh, the disease over time, uh, it, it can cause a, new, a number of symptoms. It's, uh, people have confused it as a genetic disorder in the past which is why it's shown up in your family before. What it actually is is a, a collection of spores that breeds in uh, the, like the, around the brain and the brainstem of its, uh, uh, of its host. And when the host procreates in any kind of way or comes into like fluid contact with another being, um, there's a chance of passing on those spores uh, to another person, which is why it, it passes very easily from generation to generation. So, congrats, uh, you got mushroom aids. Yeah, kind of. No, not really. Uh, <laughs> uh, but essentially, it uh, over time, it's mostly non. It, it, and what the, you really find out is that it's it's mostly not going to affect you now. But with age, it'll start to deteriorate not only your bone structure, but your nervous system, and eventually lead to uh, either, like, stroking or to um, full-on paralysis, which will obviously lead to death. It'll make it real hard to run from ghosts. <laughs> exactly, yes. As a centaur, uh, it, it's going to affect you pretty badly. So, and they're like, there's been uh, little to no success removing the spores uh it's a very dangerous process uh we're in the process of studying it ourselves right now gotcha good to know mm -hmm. so now so now you have more of an idea uh you know that was very well done family thing congratulations <laughs> q q q q yeah so uh, it's been a couple weeks, and you haven't really heard from anybody. Uh, things have died down around the city. Uh, for a little while there, it was very sketchy. Um, there was a little bit of time where each of you were kind of hidden away from your normal homes uh, while the opposite of that were searching them in the Azorius, looking for the, the people who broke into the bank. Uh, and then as the bread comes and the bread trail was covered up, uh, you were slowly ignored and kind of forgotten about. Uh, and then suddenly, uh, one night, uh, you each get a scroll delivered to your house by a small mechanical machine uh, asking you to come first thing in the morning to, uh, to uh, the Goblin Pub downtown uh, where you will meet up uh, and you can tell it's signed at the bottom 
uh, from Lavinia. Heck yeah, let's do it. So, I mean, like, if if we're back where we live, then all Max <clears throat> has to do is roll out of bed and get dressed. Yeah, I mean, you just kind of around, I guess. Somebody, somebody kind of holds up a piece of paper and says, "Hey, Max, uh, Lavinia is gonna be by tomorrow. You might want to wake up early so you can meet her." Okay, cool. I can't fucking read. Yeah, we know. <laughs> uh, so, will everybody be attending? I guess this is the yeah. Question. Let's do it. Okay, so uh, you all show up nice and early in the morning, and Lavinia is very, very prompt, very courteous and uh, on time. She greets each of you separately as she comes in. And behind her, trailing, kind of looking bleary-eyed, has a coffee in her hand, is a uh, Tessa. It is very obvious that she is not used to being awake at this early in the morning. Uh, being being the uh, being in charge of the Orzov Syndicate is obviously a little bit more uh, a little bit pushier than uh, you know waking up at six a.m. to go to a meeting. So <laughs> poor baby, poor yeah. poor rich rich baby. <laughs> so uh, they both come in and greet you, and Lavinia kind of says, "Well, I'm glad that you're you're all here because we've had some uh, some movement with our situation." And she kind of looks at Franco, and Franco kind of turns around and goes, "Hey guys, everybody, uh, let's uh let's all go out to the back to see you know there's a thing going on." And you just see all the goblins' ears perk up, and the room just kind of clears out immediately. Um. And I, she looks at you and says, uh, we finally have some information on some movement happening in Ravnica, and we're going to need your help tracking it. Yeah, there's one thing we're good at. It's, uh, it's finding stuff. I mean, that's been that's been perfectly demonstrated so far. And, she's, well, and she says, well, it may even be easier than having to track it down now. Uh, we know where the event is happening. She's like, have you heard of the uh, the royal gala that's happening this weekend? The hell's a gala? Uh, and she looks at you and kind of deeply sighs and Tessa goes, it's a very large party being thrown by the Azorius. Well, shit, Toots, that's all you had to say. Uh, Lavinia kind of clears her throat and looks at Tessa like side-eyeing and goes, yes, this is a very... Um, formal event. This event will be attended by all of the guild leaders as well as all of the well-to-do and higher-ups, uh, important people in Ravnica. Uh, we expect everyone to be there. Uh, this is a very important event for us, and we, we can't have it going awry. Uh, it's where a lot of the diplomatic uh, meetings for the guilds happen and it's very rare to get all of the guild leaders in one place like this. So, uh, so like you, you, you're worried about someone getting uh, getting knocked, I guess, right? It says something like that. We believe that they may be using the gala for a cover, uh, for something more devious than that. I don't think they would make a move against a major member of the. Uh, of the public at, at such a public event but I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't something more nefarious going on underneath <clears throat> she says what I want you to do is sneak in as the wait staff and just keep an eye out report back to me with what you find uh, and try to stop anything that you may see happening uh, before it actually does wait I'm, I'm the wait staff she says, well, that would be the most sensible way to get you in. Wouldn't I have been invited? And she says, mm, we don't usually in invite uh, beat cops to <laughs> this beat event. Cops, though, I have an important family. Uh, she says, uh, well, I, I'm not sure that uh, even your family would meet the level for this event. Uh, when I talk about well-to-do's, I don't mean people who are financially uh, stable. She's, 
I mean, uh, foreign dignitaries and heads of state and the, the like. Gotcha. Very well. Yeah, when she when she says fancy, she means uh, fancy. I mean, you know, I don't know it's what... Of, a, it's kind of like a meeting of the UN, I guess. Like. Yeah, really. I still think uh, it... Like, you know, this is just me having a hunch here and everything, but, like, if you got enough important people gathered under one roof like that, uh, whoever's whoever's bad enough to get them, they'd, uh, they'd be missing an opportunity if they didn't blow the whole place up and worry about the fallout later. Again, that's just my brain going on. You know, I don't know much about this kind of stuff. You said wait staff? Uh, I, I don't think I have a tux, but I'll figure something out. He says, oh, we can provide you with outfits for the evening and cover for your weapons uh, so that if something does go wrong, you will have access to them. But uh, I do ask that you keep a very uh, low profile. And she, she puts a lot of emphasis on low profile. And uh, she says, try to act normal. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> you know, whatever you say, whatever we got to do. Am I right, guys? Like, we good boys? Well, I suppose. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be good at this whole wait staff thing. You're you're serene as shit. He says, "Fantastic." In that case, we will. Uh, uh, I will meet with you Saturday. We will get you your supplies. Uh, make plans if you need to cover all of your bases and meet us here and then uh, you'll be able to meet us before the gala to be able to get in. Sweet. Let's do and it. And with that, she just kind of she turns and she goes, if there's nothing else that you need, uh, I will be on my way. I have several piles of paper to make up for. And she just, with a very deep sigh, kind of turns around and walks out and Taysa just kind of bleary eyed looks at you and goes I'm going back to bed and turns around and leaves <laughs> cool sick let's do so, it uh, yeah so you have a few days before the gala actually happens so if there's anything that you think you need to do or any items that you'd like to get anywhere that you'd like to go I mean you, uh, you said they're that. you said they're providing uh stuff uh what, what was i thinking uh, they're providing get ups and stuff right yeah she's uh she's already told you that she'll get you wait staff uh attire mm -hmm. mostly because she figured the the goblin from the mob that lives in the street probably doesn't have a tuxedo nah max will uh purchase some soap um okay uh I'll roll, uh, like, you know, if I have to roll for a scent, I mean, whatever. She'll buy her very first <laughs> bar of soap. Um, yeah. And also, uh, like, a little, if, if there's anything, like, of the sort she can, like, go to a blacksmith for, she wants to get, like, a copper cuff um, for one okay. for her ear that has been partially chewed off. Okay. And that's about uh, it. Yeah. So, you go to the, you go to the, the blacksmith, and you, you tell him, I guess, what you need. And he looks at you and goes, mm, yes, I think I could probably do that for, uh, let's say, just uh, uh, 50 zibs, probably. 50 zibs is coppers or silvers or golds? Uh, that's the tinier one. Okay, then yeah, uh, fucking, I can, yeah, I can do that. That's no sweat. Yeah. He's like, he's like it, it won't take much to make a simple cover for that. All right, cool. Come back uh, tomorrow and I'll have it done. Yeah, you got it, boss. Thanks a bunch. Yeah. Is there anything that you would like to do, Mark? Marky Boo. Um, no. Okay. Isaac? Um... I guess, uh... Seeing as we're gonna be around fancy people, and, you know, I'm, I'm the horseman, I should probably, mm -hmm. like... Go to like a bathhouse, get spiffied up, maybe get maybe get my herd did. Okay. So uh, you actually go back to the Celestia Conclave or Enclave, 
and there they have a really nice uh, open spa and sauna that is free for the guild members to use. So you go in and they clean you up and they get you they get you nice and spiffy. You tell them that you've got a gig working at a fancy ball that's coming up and a lot of people don't even know that it's happening so they're just like, oh, very nice, very nice. And uh, kind of, uh, they, they kind of make you look nice and neat. They, they trim your tail and clean up your hooves so that they're nice and shiny and uh, send you on your way. My my long my long hair is being pulled up and I am in full man bun again. Hell oh, yeah. yeah! Hell yeah! That'll look nice. All right, so uh, Saturday comes and you all meet up at uh, Cranko's bar again, and uh, Lavinia's there with like three tuxedo bags of varying sizes. She takes a very tiny one and hands it to Nat, and in the bag is like a, it's just a white t-shirt a vest but like a black vest and a little bow tie it's not even like i love it yeah there's like and then just like little black shorts um it's it's very comfortable you notice like way more comfortable than the clothes you normally wear Hmm. um and seems to move fairly fairly well so you feel like it you, you probably won't be constricted in it at all okay um, Even compared to your normal, and it's all short sleeves, so she she knew that you would prefer the the less constrictive clothing. Yeah, it's all good. Um, I will say that um, Nax smells very very much like just lime. You can tell she <laughs> like basically used an entire bar of lime soap in one bath. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Lavinia notices. <laughs> And she says, I see that we uh, are trying to clean up. Thank you very much for taking a bath before this event. Yeah, of course. I look green, I smell green. It's great. <laughs> she says green, yes. Uh, and she walks over to Velkin. She hands Velkin just what is a very nice, like very standard uh, cocktail outfit, like a uh, white button down shirt, black bow tie, black vest, black jacket. Uh, black pants and shoes, everything matches. It's very well made, uh, very light, so you feel like you would not be encumbered. And she she looks at you and says very specifically, uh, I made sure that these were made to the same specifications as your robes, so you should be able to cast spells while wearing them and not lose any kind of, uh, or not have any kind of issues. Uh, and then she goes over to Isaac, and she, she pulls out a very big bag, and in the bag is, like, normal clothes for the upper half of a human, and then a very large, like, black, almost, like, blanket to cover up the back. <laughs> a lot of centaurs wear, like, decorative clothing, or, like, decorative ornaments on their backs. Uh, it has the same thing, and it has, like, little, almost, uh... I don't even know how to put it. Like little sleeves, almost to go on the legs uh, on each of your legs. It's just a oh. tablecloth. <laughs> kind of. It kind of looks like a giant black tablecloth. It would be considered very fancy, probably. She says, uh, specifically for you, Farazor, you'll be working the uh, bar. We figured that it would be easier for you with your. Uh, Parent size to maybe stay in one place and observe from there. Bar Azor. Bar Azor. Yeah. Uh, she looks at Nax and Valkyrie and she says, Meanwhile, the two of you will spread out in the hall. Uh, there will be dishes for you to serve from, wine, and other drinks. We ask that you just walk around inconspicuously, let people take what they will and try to listen in and find out what you can. Keep an eye out for anybody suspicious that you might see, as this would lead, obviously, to uh, maybe what we're looking for. Hey, you got it, Chief. If there's anything I'm good at, it's juggling multiple things at once. <laughs> and she says, oh, I'm sure. Uh, she says, well, that, other than that, please don't cause a disturbance in front of the guests. Try to make it look inconspicuous if you have to slip out. 
Uh, we will have your weapons hidden in the uh, in the coat room where you may go retrieve them. I have already placed a guard there who I trust to watch over the room. He will let you in if you need anything. All right, cool. And she says, and she says with that, uh, I bid you farewell. And she gives you the uh, the location for the the gala that's going to happen. Uh, so from there, that night you travel to the uh, to the place. It's a giant ballroom connected to the uh, to the main building right in the middle of the tenth uh, tenth district, which is where the uh, living build pack. Uh, quarters are along with his offices and uh, a bunch of other Azorius uh, buildings and whatnot. Uh, lots of law things take place here. There's a, a museum, a very fancy museum, and a very uh, the biggest like opera house on Ravnica is also here. Hey, right on. Um, yeah, it's a it's a center for not only like culture and refinement, but also for law and civility uh and it's kind of known for that it's so and as you approach you can already kind of see the guests coming up the building lots of people in very long gowns you see people in bright greens and whites and um all the way to more uh subtle tones of maybe like a purple or a maroon walking in um all look like they're from different walks of life. You have people in crazy outlandish garish outfits, uh, shooting flames and stuff out of uh, instruments on their shoulders and walking around with uh, chains and things all the way down to people who look like they're dressed in what appears to be foliage from head to foot. Mm -hmm. Um you know, you have people in full armor walking up, whereas other people are in skimpy black dresses. Um, it appears to be just a mixture of people. And as you enter the actual room itself of the ballroom, uh, you can see kind of a grand entryway where there's two staircases that come down from above and lead into it, where they're escorting the guests through. Um, in the back of the room is the entrance to the kitchen. In the middle of the floor, there seems to be an area designated for uh, dancing. Maybe like, a, you think like, maybe about five, five by five yards across. Okay. Um, on each corner of the dance floor is a giant pillar. Uh, I think like a five foot pillar straight up and down um very ornately made uh very greco roman type thing uh there are some tables on the outside of that along with a very long table against one of the walls um that's just covered in different kind of foods and delicacies in one of the corners is the bar where uh barzor is going to be set up at uh right next to that is the door to the kitchen so it's right at the corner like the back right of the room is where the bar is going to be. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yep. Yeah. If you look on the left side of the room, there's a side door that obviously leads like further into the, the ballroom and the opera house. Uh, and if you look around a little, little bit more, you'll see that there are actually some staircases or some, some rooms in an area that goes down into a lower area under the staircase that people are entering through. All right. So, so with that, go ahead. Uh, the room itself is about a 40 by 40 room. Uh, it's very, very large. So you have a lot of ground to cover. Um, with that, what would you like to do? So, so current goal being uh, just basically wait and see right now? Yeah, you're, you're listening for information, anything that you might find suspicious. You're keeping an eye out for other guests as you watch people enter. Okay. Um, Barzer's going to go over to his, his post over at the bar. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to basically 
he's going to be doing long pours all night, basically trying to booze everybody up a little bit more so they're a little more loose with information. Here, um, give me a d20 roll. Just a flat? I'm sorry, what? Flat d20? Yeah. Well, that is a nat one. Oof. Oh, okay. Oof. Um, Big oof. So you're, you're really trying your best, man. And the first person who walks up uh, orders a very complicated drink that you've never heard of. And you know how it is, like a, a bartender who's, who, who's never really bartended before. You look at him and you have to ask how to make it. And then you try to watch you do it. And he's like, I pull up. I pull up the fantasy cell phone and start Googling ingredients. The stone of far like speech. Like he's, he's, it takes you a few minutes to make it. Uh, and he, he, he finally get done with it and takes a sip of it, and it's just awful. Wow, like, this, is, really this is exactly what it was like being a fucking barista at Books A Million. I'm getting, like, PTSD. Yeah, you... I hand, you make, I hand, uh, it, to him. I hand it to him, and he says it should be blue when it's actually, like, bright red. Like, yeah, and he tries it, and it's like make and placing a Long Island iced tea that somebody has just mixed awfully, and it just tastes like straight alcohol, like six different kinds of alcohol. <laughs> and he kind of just goes, "Listen, could you give me a glass of soda? I'll just mix it with this, and we'll call it a night." And so you <laughs> hand it to him, and uh, he walks away, and he does not tip you. Oh, man. Um. So we've, uh, we've all already shown up. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Okay, so um, I don't show up in whatever waiter costume they've given me. Um, I show up in my fine clothes. Why are you going off the script? <laughs> Is that okay. You don't go off the script. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Vulcan. I'm Vulcan. Don't. I'm nobody. Lawful neutral, my ass. How do you? I'm neutral. neutral. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so. Yeah. So. I'm in fine clothes. Showing up okay. in fine clothes. Uh, how do you plan to enter the ball then? Give me one second to clean up my child. The oh. front door? <laughs> yeah, front door, bitch. <laughs> um, in the meantime, while he's dealing with baby things... Sure, yeah. Um, Nax is going to get right to work. She's going to pick up two trays of hors d'oeuvres and then place one on her head and then take a third one in her remaining free hand and she's gonna fucking butter people up okay uh give me an acrobatics check oh don't mind if i do oh please baby please baby please baby uh it's a 12 okay so uh you place the plate on your head and you have the other one in your hand but you're having to balance one and kind of walk funny Mm -hmm. uh you are drawing attention to yourself hell yeah um and people are starting to pay attention to you and they do see you and they'll they'll start coming over and picking things off and it kind of unbalances the play a little bit and you're wobbling more and more dex but, safe uh, dex safe okay and your head pretty well Let's see. so much for a net 20 uh, a 20 dex but okay i'll take it people are like oh look at that look at that interesting little goblin look at I didn't know that there was going to be entertainment this year. Yeah, that's me. I'm interesting. They've, they've hired some interesting, uh, some interesting waiters and waitresses. Nax is going to basically like spend most of the night practicing keeping it on her head <laughs> and getting better at it. Um, but yeah. like you know, <clears throat> while still doing what she's been uh, hired to do today. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. Man, there's just not a good... Mm. You good, Chief? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, the night kind of goes on like this for a while. Eventually, Mark will get back into the night and to get into this place. Invisibility. You're gonna turn invisible. I mean, yeah, I'm just gonna walk right in. Okay. <laughs> uh, would you give me a stealth check? Yeah. 
Do you want it at like advantage or something? I'm not really sure why I'm giving you a stealth check. I'm invisible. I know what invisibility does, but I'd like to get you. I'd like I, you to get I you. I know. I just by putting that out there. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, you you cast invisibility on yourself and you, you go to step inside and as soon as you step inside, the part of you that is through the door starts to become visible. Uh, and you realize very quickly that this plan is not going to work. So you try to uh, very quickly sidestep into a crowd of people who are entering, who will all have their, uh, their passes as well. Um, and it works for the most part. You spend the first about hour of the event trying to sidestep one guard who, who noticed you, um, and you do so fairly proficiently. So, uh, you've now entered the event. Yay. Ravnica TSA is sleeping today. Hello, small okay. child. Uh, so like I said, uh, the first hour goes pretty uneventfully. Uh, Isaac is struggling to make drinks. Nax is entertaining people with her uh, with her ability to balance things on her head. Um, you know, and some people seem impressed, and some people are very meh about the whole situation. Yeah, fuck them. Uh, yeah, Velkin spends the first good bit of the the gala trying to evade security until they they finally decide that maybe he was just seeing things. And kind of goes on, <laughs> um, and so now you can kind of get into what you are here for. Um, next, there are several groups all around the uh, all around the at tables and at different points of the of the room. Okay. There, currently, you look around. Can you give me a perception roll? I absolutely can. I will do so now. That's a five. Mm, yeah, you look around and you see nothing suspicious going on. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, you have you have no idea other than you know whatever. So, so um, you go around and do you will. Uh, Belkin, you have a high enough perception that you notice that the there are quite a few people on the dance floor already, um, dancing, uh, and there are several groups maybe standing around with some, uh some very interesting mixes of guilds. You notice one person in very dark clothing, uh, lots of blues and blacks, talking to somebody who's covered in a bunch of vines and this kind of stony looking dress uh, at one part of the room, along with uh, some people who are looking not too, uh, not too happy over by one of the pillars posted up. Uh, they look like they might be from the Gruel clan. Um, Barzor, could you give me any perception while I go to sleep? Yep, give me one second. Also, while I'm doing this, just so I can kind of think about what I want to do, do since we didn't use it, uh, that is perception, a nine. Okay. But since we didn't use it, uh, do I still have the mind control score thing? Yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah, okay. But yeah, nine for yeah. perception. So you haven't really noticed anybody sketchy yet either, but you do see a couple of people sitting at the end of the bar. It looks like there may be a couple of uh, Azorius uh, senators down there uh, kind of drinking and getting a little loud even for the beginning of the evening, you know, uh, trying to swallow down the drinks that they were given and uh, maybe complaining a little bit too much about what's going on. So how would you all like to act? Hmm. Okay. Um, quick question. Yeah. Uh, just so I kind of know where we're at. We say an, an hour has passed, but it's still early. Like we're still looking at like most, like people are still filtering in, right? It's not like events are really going. Yeah, on. it's yeah. like fashionably late. The event started at like seven. It's like eight o'clock now. Okay, I'm just making sure that like it's not like uh, this decision is like what we need to do to figure shit out. Like I'm trying to think timeline here. 
No, no, no. And this is a it, I, it's a gala, but I mean, a, a, it's a party on Ravnica. So even yeah. for the elite, it's going to go very late into the evening. Um, think like two or three in the morning. There will probably be people here. Okay. Uh, then Barzur. Uh, he's gonna go down to where he sees that group uh, kind of go, and he's like, "Hey guys, um, you know, uh, I see that you guys are, you know, kind of get, you know, enjoying your evening. You know, I, I want to, you know, introduce you my special drink. And you know, the first one's on the house because you know I want you guys to, you know, know what's going on. And so I'm gonna combine a couple things here." Barzor being a horseman, gonna take uh, roots from the Kentucky Derby. Also, great with herbs. So we're gonna do some mint juleps. Okay. Did you give me a? Hmm, give me. A... It's, it's booze and herbs. I'm thinking that's medicine. Yeah, give me a medicine roll. That is a nineteen. Okay. Yeah, so these guys are kind of like, ooh. Well, first of all, they perk up at the idea of creature. Uh, the next thing is they, they're like, well, if it's his specialty drink, maybe he knows how to make this one. Uh, so uh, <laughs> they're like, all right, let's see what you got. And you, So you make this drink in front of them. They're very impressed and you look very proficient trying to make it. And you hand it over to them and they try it. And they're like, wow, this is... This is surprisingly good, you know? This is much better than we thought it was going to be. So, uh, and they'll go ahead and finish about half of it. Gotcha. Yeah, at this no, point, the not. goal... At this point, the goal is more so to, like, redeem myself with opinions so, like, I can get more people coming back and maybe loosen them up a little bit. Like, I'm not yeah. actually trying to die for information. I'm trying to, like, uh, break down inhibitions and reservations. Yeah, and they both lean over and drop a Zeno into, like, the tip jar or whatever. And then uh, they're like, wow, thank you. This is much better. And then one of them looks at you and goes, wow, you must be one of those Celestians then because uh, they certainly wouldn't have in invited a gruel or centaur to come host an event like this. And he kind of elbows his friend and they both laugh. Uh, he's like, yeah, those city, those silly city smashers aren't, gonna, aren't allowed in here. And uh, Barzer is just going to give a, a wink and a finger gun, like. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, same to you, man. We'll, well, you know what? We'll take another drink and they order another round. Okay. Yes, yeah. So yeah. He, uh... so they're good and they're probably going to be there for a while. Cool, cool. Okay. Okay. Hello. Maybe he's sitting down. Cool. Nax, is there anything that you'd like to do? Um, Nax is going to pluck out one of the more exotic dishes uh, in the hors d'oeuvre selection for her next plate. Um, I'm thinking like some trigon skewers, uh, you know, like the pterodactyl motherfuckers. Um, yeah, sure. So like, really, it's really like chewy meat, but it's like it's got like some real spicy kick to it. Um, mm -hmm. and she's gonna basically parade this around, like uh, showing it to folks, like, yeah, no, try this out. You, you never had Trigon yeah. if you have ever, if you never had Trigon at a party. She's yeah, been. Me... Go ahead. Sorry. Why are you doing that? Why don't you give me an investigation roll? Okay. Just get a task it at negative two because of course that's a three. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, uh, you learn nothing making the round. That's cool. She's everybody, you're like, mm, everybody seems like in the up and up. <laughs> yeah, she's she's basically gonna be following Barazor, like offering it as a pairing to his stuff. Yeah, you're you're very enthralled in your job right now. Yeah, no, Na very, Nax is realizing she had. To take in. Nax is realizing yeah. she had she missed her calling as a fucking food server, <laughs> as a yeah, caterer. Yeah, a lot to take in. It's easily the fanciest place Nax has ever been. The easily the fanciest people. I will say she's like having trouble containing her absolutely burning rage that people party like this while she had to grow up in um in like absolute destitute poverty, but she she's keeping it together for now. Yeah. Um Mark, what would you like to be doing? What is Belknap doing now? 
I'm gonna snooze people. All right. Uh, so you kind of notice on the edge of the dance floor there are, there are three different it looks like groups of people. There are some. There's a couple. There's like a group of like three women together, kind of. You know, they're doing the little dance thing where they're dancing, but they're not really dancing. They're sitting there talking, enjoying their, their food and the drinks. And, and it looks like they're, they're probably from, like, there's, like, a Golgari member and a member from, like, the Rakdos, and then a member that doesn't, you can't quite identify the guild of. Uh, she only has two ounces. Um, there are, there are, there's another group that's uh, all guys, and uh, there's a, a big orc in the middle of it. There's one that's uh, that looks like maybe a tiefling of some kind or some kind of like devil. Uh, you know, he's dressed up in like this like really torn up tuxedo that looks really edgy and stuff, and he's kind of hopping around. And uh, there's another guy who looks like just the biggest minotaur you've ever seen, and they are just like going at it. They're getting hyped up and jumping up and down. They're super excited to see each other. Um, right, boys. Yeah, and then there is a, a, a kind of a mixed group of people who are just kind of standing off to the side doing uh, their own thing. They, uh, they seem to be mostly uh, more prim and proper, maybe, but not necessarily fancier. There's a there's a uh, uh, somebody there who's very obviously a scientist of some kind, and another person that looks like maybe a hybrid uh, from the Simic group there. There's and an, uh, it looks like they're having a very in-depth conversation about something. So th there's a, there's an there's an elf in the corner who's in a very poorly made disguise. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. So, uh, is there a group that you would specifically like to go try to mingle with? People that aren't going to try and kill me? Well, I mean, you're at a gala, so probably nobody here is going to try and kill you. The... Hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm going to look for the person that would share my dislikes of goblins. Motherfucker. I'm not sure <laughs> if you would be able to tell that. From I'd be able to tell. Yeah, yeah, no, you, no, you, no, you, you, you can't fucking glimpse casual racism from looking at some. Actually, yes, you can. They're called MAGA hats. Anyway. <laughs> I don't, I don't think anybody here is wearing a. Make Ravnica uh, great again. <laughs> deport the goblins. Jesus Christ. Gotta get that Mara hat in there. <laughs> Make her have a good grade. Mara. Uh, I mean, the Mara, the Mara hat. hat. I mean, there's gotta be somebody. Uh, so, uh, you walk past, you. uh, you walk past the group of women, and they kind of, you hear them kind of snicker about something, and mention something about blue skin. Uh oh. Yeah, later. Oh no no racism's not so fun whenever it's against the Vidalkins, huh huh is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> no, it's not racism, it's ignorance. <laughs> Those women are clearly yeah. morons. Yeah, it's, it's only um, racist when it's about other people. The 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 group of uh, the Minotaur and the ogre, or, or the Minotaur and the orc and the the tiefling are kind of they're just like freaking out still. They're just wigging out. They have obviously not seen each other in a very long time. They're in like friendly banter mode back and forth. Uh, just partying it up. Um, but as you walk past the scientists, you can't really make out what they're saying. Uh, but you can tell that there, there, there is something very in-depth that they are talking about. Oh, I know science. But it's yeah, it's so if you want to go I mean, if you want to go engage with them, you know, I'm really searching for goblin racism. <laughs> I like how none of us are fucking doing the job that we've been hired to do at all. 
Okay, I'm, I'm buttering people up. I'm getting there. So uh, at this point, uh, you kind of hear a loud yeah, toll come from above, and you hear a voice kind of boom over, and they're like, now presenting the head of the the Isaac clan, or sitting in for the head of the Isaac clan for League tonight, uh, our good friend Rao Zarek. And at this point, a, uh, a wizard from the, uh, from the Is It League walks down the stairs. He has a very large glove on one hand. He's in a very swanky looking, almost laboratory suit. Uh, it's very clean, you've noticed. There's kind of this almost steampunk look, look to it. There's pipes going everywhere off out of his back. It's connected to his arm. And his hair is kind of white and gray and standing up and kind of shocked back um it, to the point where he looks kind of crazy so but um Ra- <clears throat> ralzark was uh one of the people on lavinia's list right uh yes okay. real quick i'm gonna be honest i don't even remember what we're doing i had a baby for like 30 minutes i understand so. we are we are at a high society party um, where all the guilds of Ravnica are going to be there, and they're expecting movement from the enemy um, in any sort of number of ways. So we're basically here acting as wait staff to spy on things and like just act inconspicuous in case something does happen. We'll be on the site to deal with it. Does that, right, so we're just like, does that cover it good enough, Mark? Uh, Josh? Yeah, basically. Um, or like protection? Uh, you know, just like basically on-call response units i guess are just like hey if we notice something that doesn't have to be dealt with we can go back to lavinia and talk to them about it um so what we're looking for is we're looking for people that seem to have hidden agendas right we're trying to see if anything's you know going weird over here at the party um All right. josh yes please refer to my passive insight what is your passive insight? I hate that passive insight is a thing. No, like, hold on. Pa- no, 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 no. What? There's passive <laughs> investigation, there's passive perception, there's passive in- insight. What is the point of having these skills in the first place if it's not, like, something you have to actively do? I don't understand. I don't understand why... But I don't see passive insight anymore. There's passive insight, perception, and, and uh, investigation. Where, where does that come from? Where is that? Look it up. Uh, That's how I found it. <laughs> the, is that is that like? Is, it's probably in the dungeons, the dungeon masters, somewhere. Anyway, like 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 so. I feel like I feel like I feel like pa- uh, like passive checks have to be for like creatures who are like really bad at hiding their true agendas. You know what I mean? Oh. Like, Yes, I'm absolutely. This is basically, take ten. Like, like, buddy, I'm sorry, yeah, but yeah. like, like, buddy, I'm sorry, but I, I, I just, I, I, really don't like that. Well, yeah, twenty inside checks is gonna be fine. Then that's fine. I'm just like my my whole deal is that if it like completely invalidates dice rolls, I don't understand what the point of having those skills at all is if we have someone who can auto it all the time. Yeah, it's it's not an automatic thing. I'm, I'm like I'm put no, please please don't like assume that I'm mad at you or anything I'm not I'm just like I, I I don't get it you know what I mean um yeah it, it everything I just read it just says it's basically a take ten yeah that's that's what it is it's basically so the way that passive per- perception works is it's basically you are just uh super observant. And always paying attention, and so that's, that's, that's kind of what the other two are for. Well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, in, insight, insight, and uh, investigation are like actively trying to do something. I don't understand why there would ever be a passive for either of those. Where perception, I understand because it's like noticing something in the corner of your eye, maybe, or like seeing that I don't know a book in a bookshelf is slightly pushed in. Um, but with like with like I mean, insight, anyway. how can you like do that with multiple people in your line of vision? You have to be like focusing on somebody to do that. Well, I mean, if you have years of training, I, I, I guess, I guess, reading people is a thing. Yeah, I, I, 
I don't know. It's it's, I mean, it's up to Josh. Treat, just treat it like a take ten type I, thing, not a. I, uh... I rolled the twenty. Yeah, he did. He 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 did roll a twenty. But like, who are so you? What are you rolling on? Yeah, who are you rolling inside against? I'm I'm rolling a quick general um, insight. I mean, I'm I'm going to be able to pick out a shady person. I, I mean, so what I'm looking for is somebody around. that. I mean, go ahead and describe what you're looking for, I guess. I'm looking for somebody that is obviously here at the party, but they are not quite enjoying the party because they are clearly occupied with something else. Um, do you notice several people like that? Uh, it, from people who look like they're just not having a good time to people who seem to be uh, actively, you know, there's there's a group of people at a table that you see actively looking around, um, kind of doing exactly what you're doing, scoping out the place. Um, not necessarily, it doesn't seem malicious, I would say, but uh, they're just being attentive to, you know, uh, people who seem preoccupied. Um, there's one person who keeps... Uh, checking the time, you notice a couple people who seem distraught about some stuff, but not necessarily anybody who seems out of place. It just seems like some people are not enjoying themselves. You said somebody's checking the time. Yeah. I, I want to. I want to uh, talk to them. Okay. So you move up to this person, and it's a a female, uh, in a uh, long blue dress. Uh, not necessarily the flashiest thing on the face of the planet, but uh, very, uh, uh, not necessarily not flattering either. Um, and she just seems nervous, not necessarily apprehensive, just kind of out of place. Uh, and she says, oh, hello, can I help you? Yes, do you happen to have the time? And she says, uh, yes, it's about 8.45. Wub wub. She kind of looks at you and she says, Hold on, dad. I'm being super dead right now. I'm changing diaper thing and playing oh, okay. Yeah, Jesus Christ, dude. Um, okay. So I got. Yeah, go ahead. So I, I have an idea, but it's a little okay. drastic. So if anybody has anything a little more mild, feel free. Well, b before before we go with like Jurassic plans, like hold on to that real quick. But like Ralzarek hasn't spoke yet, right? Like, is it Ralzarek like no, about he, to? He's entered the. You know, they just kind of they they announced him entering. Um, he he walks down the the banister, and uh, kind of joins a group at the front of the party of okay. some other very fancy looking dignitaries. Okay, so he's not like a guest speaker or something. No, no, it's okay. just, uh, as the guild leaders enter, they'll, they'll announce the Okay. All right, go ahead then, Isaac. I'm sorry. I thought he was going to be, like, a speaker or something. I thought we were, like, just basically jumping on the possibility that he would be a speaker. Yeah, at, at this point, you hear another call, and at the top of the stairs, you see somebody clad in bright white and red armor um, from head to toe with a goatee and a mustache, um black hair you can't really make out what he looks what his hair looks like under um his armor because it, it's pretty much covered from head to foot and he has a very large broadsword at his waist um comes in and they were like uh and the announcer comes on and says i would like to welcome now the representative from the boros legion uh taji and as he makes his way down it's very very proper very uh uh, think very like battle battalion legion, uh, commander of an army type. Okay. Of He's very generalistic in the, in the way he acts. Oh, so more and more people. Like, there's still quite a bit more people to show up. Yeah, we we haven't even seen the all the leaders from the guild show up. Oh, yet, so uh, never mind. Oh. I, I I don't I don't want to do what I want to do yet, though. Um, I mean, I feel I, I feel like we would remember that Rawl Zarek was on that list, right? Yes. Okay, so... You, you have a fairly good memory of the, the list and everything. 
Uh, Vinya probably would have gone over it again with you right before you left for the event. Okay. Um, the Nax is gonna keep an eye on that dude. Okay. Like, I, I, um, I, I want to declare that her efforts are being focused towards him. Okay. Um, again, you guys hear a toll about five minutes later, and uh, they say, uh, now hailing from the Azorius Guild, uh, Esperia herself has decided to join us this year. And with that, a very large sp- uh, sphinx comes in. Oh, shit. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and a very like grand throne is brought out of one of the back rooms kind of seemingly out of nowhere and placed towards the the middle of the one of the sides of the the room so there is now a very large seat occupied by a very large sphinx okay um so anyways back to my uh, my thing sorry about that guys i'm mm-hmm. doing fun. it's thing. almost like you have a newborn baby yeah i know um, so I'm going to ask her if she's waiting on somebody because she keeps checking, checking the time. And she, she looks at her watch and she looks at you and she kind of smiles and she goes, no, not really. I'm just not very comfortable at this kind of event. And my boss asked me to come. We, we know how it is. Uh, in her work politics, I, I, I don't do well with this kind of thing. You know, I, I'm really made to sit behind a desk when it comes down to it. Who's your boss? Uh, she, she kind of stammers and uh, names off one of the one of the senators uh, for the Azorius. Uh, she's like, uh, uh, yeah, his name is a uh, Ryan. Uh, he's he's one of the senators for uh, for the area for the for the fourth district actually. And uh, I, I'm his secretary, and I don't usually come to these kinds of things, but he. He, he said it would be good to have somebody to, uh, to to help out this time, you know? She's like, I, I was just told I could leave at yeah. night, so I'm kind of waiting for that. So where is he at? And she's like, oh, and she kind of glances over the bar, and uh, she says, oh, I'm probably getting drunk right now. Okay, well, I mean, if you want, I can keep you company. Just to make Tyler angry, roll the seduce. Look, which which might be nice. No, like the rule for any seduction has to be you have to seduce the DM. Like, <laughs> what's the role he says? Yeah, well, like, 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 what, what do you, what do you say to her? You can't just like, yeah, I, I point my magic fuck stick at her and like, uh, that's it. <laughs> No, you, you've got, you got, you, yeah, you, 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 you've got to like put some effort and thought into this, man. You can't just like, you know, yeah, no, I roll to have sex with the barmaid. No, you gotta be like, hey, what are you doing later tonight? Uh, I see that you've I got mean, like some. You want to go in, man? Dude, you know what? I, I show me what you got, asshole. Let's do it. Let's go. Uh oh. I want to hear. No, I want to hear this. Let's go. I, no, I would love to hear this. If we were gonna be finish this tonight, uh. Yeah, it's fine. It's cool. I get the child present. I can't. I can't open my moves. It's 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 <laughs> fine. <laughs> That's the only time you're exempt. Damn it. <laughs> How you got here? God, I love you guys so much. Yeah, me too, buddy. Me too. God damn it. Uh, so at this point, uh, you you hear another toll, and they say, uh, uh and through the the door comes a surprisingly a Gorkin and they say now from the Bulgari uh, syndicate is the always lovely Vraska and introduce her as she's coming down the stairs that's another one on the list <clears throat> so Tyler you said you're going to focus on Rao now yeah, um, Nax is basically gonna, like, head up to his, cause, like, he just arrived, she's gonna be like, you know, ah, uh, Lord, uh, you know, Lord Ral, you know, she's gonna try to butter him up with, uh, you know, like, some, some steaks, you know, some, some good old Ravnican snakes, steaks, snake steaks, you know, they got, like, giant okay. snakes. Some snakes, man. Yeah, no, we, we've got, like, some rattlesnake or something. 
That, that's give how I see me, this Give me a, uh... <laughs> athletics. Please say athletics. Please say... I know. No, <laughs> your choice, performance or persuasion. Oh, good. I'm equally bad at both. Um, and let's do persuasion just for the shiggles. That's an eight. <laughs> with, with a nat one on the fucking advantage roll, by the way. <laughs> so I'll take it. Persuasion is not uh, so, so he's not openly offended by you approaching him, but he does just kind of take something off the plate and go, yes, yes, uh, thank you, waiter, and kind of shoes you away. Eh, she's going to go ahead and um, schmooze people near him, but, you know, keep an eye. Yeah, yeah, just kind of keep an eye on him. He seems to be fairly normal right now. He's He's being his normal eccentric is itself, talking up to some... Other is it scientists about some experiments that they've been doing, something about lightning and channeling it and ah, signals yes. across the city and channeling new energy. It's, it sounds very scientific and very dangerous. Are you telling me that the is it the is it league is trying to set up Wi Fi in Ravnica? <laughs> I don't know, man. But, uh, <laughs> but he seems to think he's tapped into some kind of new signaling device or something to. Uh, communicate across Ravnica important information or something that and that it may be leading to something he says much grander in time hmm much grander you say yeah uh, uh, in the meanwhile uh, you hear a toll and after that toll uh, immediately after it is a very large a loud Hand to a door, and the front door of the gala hall flies off, and in enters a giant ogre, a uh, two-headed ogre, uh, and you hear the voice behind him say, uh, "Now presenting to you Rorik Thar of the Gruul," and uh, this very large ogre just kind of comes in, stumbles in, and has a seat uh, at one of the tables with uh, just a bunch of people who look very unhappy to be there. Um, very obviously not dressed up, very obviously there against their will, and you see kind of like a, a city cleric just kind of come over and magically fix the door and then walk away. Uh, they were obviously planning on this to happen. <laughs> um, so yeah, I cast my chance. Okay. Nice. I usually grab one of the or uh, an hors d'oeuvre off of one of the trays going by. Okay. 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 Uh, I think it's an oyster. Yeah, the girl who's with you is like, oh, oh I, I, I didn't realize that I was in the presence of such a, a talented wizard. I, I know that that takes a lot of control to be able to do. My mage hand uh, probably did, won't even reach over to you, and she kind of nervously giggles and checks her watch again. Uh, if you would like, I could show you some pointers on how to use it. Yes, and then that I would slurp be... the Yes, there we go. Yes. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, that would that would be lovely. I, I love some help, you know. She, she, she kind of just switches a little bit and then goes back to what she was doing. Meet me on the roof at midnight, and then I vanish. Okay. She's like very stunned uh, <laughs> and very confused. She's just kind of like, okay. This is this is like this is the prelude to us like going into the meeting room at like three in the morning, and Lavinia's like, "Where the fuck were you guys?" And then like, fucking Velkin is the last person to walk in. He's like, "Guess who just got laid?" To oh fuck, I just remembered. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we were supposed to be doing something. <laughs> I had this roof thing and everything, man. It was like some fucking DiCaprio shit. Oh man. Anyway, I, just, I mean, to so, be fair, um, I mean, you got you got him seducing the girl. You got uh, me like sitting there with my mind control spore, getting ready to like spike drinks. Like, oh, that's a. Good at this point, there's an, another talk, and uh, they say. Now representing the Demir Guild, uh, surprise guest, since, and we, we're always happy to have them. 
uh, would be Kana Asari. <laughs> oh. And you see a very uh, familiar face in the the the, the gala. Well, that was um. If you guys don't remember, that was a uh, Kanahanazawa. You said, or sorry, Kana Azari. Azari, got it. She was the uh. She was the person who helped us break into the um, bank. I, I do believe yeah. she said uh, Kamehameha. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, we're not the Kanagawa yet. <laughs> Return to return to Kamigawa. Anyway. Uh, all right, so Barazur is going to go back over to those senators, and he's going to kind of, like, do, like, a quick status check on them, be like, hey, you know, you guys doing good? Need another round? Like, uh... Yeah, at, at this point, they are they are getting quite raucous, and more people have joined in. It looks like there's some people from some different guilds. Um, you know, colleagues of theirs that have shown up at, by this time... And they're all kind of sitting around chortling and laughing, and it, it seems like they're really enjoying themselves probably a little bit too much for the, the type of um, event this is. And you notice that when uh, when Asperius steps in the room, that those Azoria senators immediately straighten up and look like the most sober people you have ever seen. They are, <laughs> they are struck by the fact that she is there. And one of them leans over... Uh, you hear one of them lean over to the other one and say, I can't believe she left the guild hall. Have you heard everything that's going on? It, the threats against her life and everything? Yeah, this is crazy. She never gets out now. Well, uh, hey, uh, I, I couldn't help but over here, you know, uh, you guys, and look at you guys. You guys seem a little little stiff. Uh, what's going on, bros? Hmm, he kind of looks at you and goes, oh, oh it's not much. Uh, we're... It's just someone here who we're surprised to see. Uh, you know, not everybody in the Azorius gets out like they used to, I guess. Oh, and, and why is that? You guys seem like a fun bunch. He's saying kind of has a deep sigh and goes, well, ever since the, uh, ever since the that damn implicit maze showed up and we got that living guild pack, uh, the Azorius haven't been the most, um, the most uh, liked group of people in the, or the most liked guild on the, on the, which, on the which planet. major are they talking about? Uh, they're talking about the Speria. Oh, okay. The big old yeah. Sphinx. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> basically, um, what happened was the implicit maze is this big thing. Your characters would all know about it because they're all alive when it happened. It happened like roughly a year before this campaign took place. Um, essentially, the old guild pact that kept people in line kind of crumbled apart and fell apart, and the failsafe kicked in. It's the guild pact is this giant magical contract that kind of assigns everybody their goals and their it defines what each guild is like. Um, and so the magical, the magic kicked in, and at the end of the implicit maze, it was decided that, uh, Jace Bellerin would be the new living guild pack. He's kind of in charge of the whole plane and making laws and making sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and because of his ties to the Azorius and the Celestia, um, the Azorius are, do have a good bit of power. I mean, they make all of the legal power for the, the plane and kind of run the police so, with that, they're not necessarily the most liked people. You know, you have people like the Rakdos who believe everything should just be a giant party, and people like the Ghoul who think that we should set everything back to the Stone Age, and, uh, you know, the Demir who are all about secrets, and the Golgari who are all about rot and death, and de the transformation of death into life, and life into death, and uh, that a lot of that <laughs> is hard to work with around, you know... Laws. Yeah, so so uh, he, he just kind of makes it very clear that he's like, you know, and there have been a lot of threats lately against people like her, uh, and we wouldn't want to see anything happen to her. She's honestly the best guild leader we've had in yeah, no. a deck of millennia, you know? And at this point, he's going to kind of feign a little bit of rowdiness and be like, yeah, no, for sure. Who's who's sending out threats? I'll, I'll, I'll take it myself. I'm sorry. He kind of looks at you and nods and goes, "Wow, for a Celestian, you're very uh, 
Uh, you're very rambunctious, huh? Uh, I mean, kind of, leans in and kind of goes, you must have had a parent in the gruel, huh? Well, you know what they say about us centaurs. <laughs> and they laugh, and then they kind of slap each other on the knee, you know, like, yeah, we do, we, yeah. Uh, sometime in the middle of this, there's another toll, and uh, you, you, everybody looks up, and then they're like, now presenting uh, from the Orzhov Syndicate, Kaya, and uh, in walks this uh, this woman you've never met, uh, and next to her is actually Tessa. Um, she's got dark skin. She's got a very uh, a very large head of hair, um, kind of grayish eyes, and she, she has a very demanding demeanor, whereas Tessa seems to be kind of, you know, she's very demure, very, uh, fades into the background very easily and likes it that way so that she can be kind of sneakier. Uh, this person has a very forward presence. This person's very uh, uh, demanding of everybody's attention, more so. Hmm. And you also notice the difference of uh, while Kaya is in a very regal-looking ball gown, uh, or, I'm sorry, uh, Tace is in a very regal-looking ball gown, uh, Kaya is wearing n- what appears to be normal street clothes. So that's the third person from our list that's currently in the building, so I'm pretty sure the next person that's going to come in, now introducing Nicol Bolas the Deceiver. <laughs> Dragon swoops in. <laughs> yeah, really. No, um, so this person comes in, um, and you, you see her kind of walk down the stairs with Tessa, and they kind of look at each other and go their own separate ways, and, uh, oddly enough, Mark, you notice that she goes over and starts a conversation with Rao. They seem at least familiar with each other. Mm, don't like that. Bark, 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 bark. Are you saying that you you're gonna start barking? No, she she she's barking in the on the inside, you know. <laughs> barking on the inside. Barking. Um, the Say that again. Who does she talk to? To uh, Ralzarek. Ralzarek is the guy that uh Nax was watching. The is it guy who was one of the guys on our list. Okay. Now these guys on my list. We're just guarding them, or are we suspecting We're them? We're suspecting them. Okay. Yeah, if you remember, they are the the people that were given on to, to you on the list that you stole from the, uh, the bank. So, the two people talking now, are they both on the list? Yes. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Um... How long would it take to ritual fast? Uh, ten minutes. Yeah, it takes five to ten minutes. Ten minutes? And it's like super obvious that you're doing it. Yes. You would not if I go to a broom closet. Not if you do what? Not if I go to a broom closet. I guess. (laughs) You're gonna be like drawing sigils on the broom closet, just like symbols on the fucking wall. Somebody opens it up, they're expecting you to see, like, seven minutes in heaven, and they just see you sitting there, om and om and om and om and <laughs> It's like um, some candles burning at your feet. I've obviously, I've obviously verified that magic is allowed inside the building, just for some odd reason I got the invisible, invisible Man, what, what, for what reason could they not want invisible people at this very high-function gala, like... Uh, I don't know. Um, um, so, I will say, if you get caught doing this, it's going to be very suspicious, and you will probably be thrown out. That's fine. I have plenty of different faces. So, so basically, the whole list is in here, right? Uh, there's still a couple names on the list. The list was Kaya, um, who is here, Domri, who is a uh, leader of the Gruul clans, who is not here. Uh, Ralzarek is Ralzarek is a member of the Izzet League. He's here talking with Kaya. Dovin is a Vidalkan from uh, Help Me Kaladesh, Josh. Well, I mean, you wouldn't know that. I would, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm metagaming. My, my apologies. Um, Dovin is not here. 
Tezzeret is not here, and obviously Nicol Bolas is not here, but Vraska is here as well. So we've got three people from the list here. Vraska's doing her own thing, not with Raul and Kaya. Um, while so, Mark is in the closet, would you give me a perception roll? What, where do you, what are you ritual casting, Mark? Unseen Servant. Oh, God. That is an 11. An 11. Okay. I don't think you've noticed me in that either. Uh, Tyler, why don't you give me one as well? I would love to. Let me just pull up my handy-dandy character sheet here. I'm going to click on uh, Perception. Come on, come on, net 20 out of 10. Damn it. Uh, this is, now we're just this like rolling like garbage. We suck. Yeah. This <laughs> is real tough. Uh, this is so, real tough. So, I mean, Barzor notices a couple things. Um, so, Barzor, you notice that uh, after Kai is done talking to Rao, she very quickly heads over to Braska and has a very short and curt conversation with her. Hmm. Um, and uh, at the same time, you see Tesa kind of slipping up to the bar. Excuse me, Mark? What is happening over I'm here? I'm just checking things. I think you rigged the system. I, I have not rigged anything. Because we're all doing very bad. <laughs> you rolled a 19 on animal handling. Oh, good. I'm doing, I know. I I'm think you rigged it. I would I'm never use that. Roll, so. so, Taste is going to uh, come up and order a drink. Would you give me a, a, a d20 roll? I believe, that's, I believe that's Barzor, yeah. That would be Barzor. 11. 11? Okay. Uh, so, so you do pretty well uh, mixing the drink that she wants. It's it's fairly good. It's not the best drink she's ever had, but, you know, it, it's passable as a bartender. And she kind of looks at you and nods and goes and leans in a little bit and under a hushed tone says, have you seen anything yet? And... And Barzer with 100% honesty can say, nope. We found she shit. Goes, well, uh, she goes, well, keep your eye out, especially on certain people uh, who may or may not have been on a short list. A wink. This is getting tough because, like, we can't even strategize as a party because we're not like in the vicinity of each other really yeah. well it doesn't help that a third of the party locked themselves in a closet like what I, what I want to do what I want to do is actually relatively drastic I got this feel free I'm to I'm, feel I'm, free I'm, to I'm, wait, make what? suggestions uh, you Man, know I just, because the rationale does exist like I could do this drastic thing, and it's one of those like for the betterment of all, pe like, like the safety of the majority. But it's gonna be like, all right, shit's going down now, boys. Let's go. Tell me, tell us about it. Like, are you just gonna like charge okay. charge one of the planeswalkers? Like, fuck it, we're gonna commit. I'm not meta gaming. I'm gonna commit though. <sighs> I was gonna, okay. This is the Zen man over here. Yeah, really. What? All right. So Barzer is on the, next, on, on the on the next round of the senators, whichever one seems to be kind of the ringleader of it. I am going to put give him mind control spore. Okay. All right. Shit. Um. Can I make a also suggestion following that? Like after you do that. Um, well, actually, ah, never mind. That, that's gonna draw too much. Uh, I was gonna talk to Bar. Uh, I was gonna say like, what if Max rode on Barzor with her little plates while we did all this? But that'd be drawing too much attention. It's probably best that we stay split for now, in case he gets compromised. Nax is just here, like, yeah, check out these snake bits I got. She's really leaning into the edible snake stuff. So he is gonna find it incredible. You're gonna have to get closer to the mic, Mark. You're like, cutting up real bad. I don't know what it is. It's like, you guys were hearing me fine earlier. Eh. I don't know. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, kind of still cutty. I, I don't know. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. How about now? Yes. Okay, good. Mark. Oh, okay. So, 
uh, Barzor, you you kind of slip in the spores to the main guy, and um, he takes it and drinks it and goes, hmm. It, it seems there may be something off a little bit with this drink, this last one, buddy. Uh, but he's already pretty intoxicated. No, it's not midnight yet. Uh, it's it's probably closer to like eleven o'clock now. Um, but he's already pretty intoxicated. So, uh, uh, you notice that, um, his eyes kind of glass over some, maybe a little bit, and while he's not completely out of it, he seems much calmer, uh, much more maybe influenceable. Is that the word? <laughs> he just, he just says, hey buddy, come down to this end of the bar, uh, and I can, so I can get you, uh, a, another free drink. He says, yeah. No, that sounds good. Sure, I'll head down there. So we take and he kind of pushes up yeah. and he goes, "Yeah, guys, give me, give me just a minute. Let me go see. You. I need to head over here for a second. And go. Oh, okay. They don't mind. They they've been drinking the whole time. So, so we take them over to a section where there's like very few people, and hopefully none. But he understands that it's pretty crowded. And, yeah. Uh, so there's like a corner end of the bar. It's it's lighter on people. And he's going to pull out from underneath uh, the bar. He's going to pull out something like, you know, relatively like package size, like square box, like just something, and tell him to put it underneath his shirt, like in his coat, whatever. Oh my god. Yeah, gonna... this is where it's going, yeah. Oh my god. He's going to look at it and go, why would I do that? Well, because in about five minutes, you're going to run into the middle of the floor and tell everybody you have a bomb on you. We're going to try to thin the herd and clear this ballroom out. <laughs> goes, oh, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Why would I... Hey, who, who, who adjusted the spores here, buddy? I mean, it, it's, it's going to be the coolest party gag ever. He's and like, then the oh. less people there are, the more booze there is for you. He's like, oh, it's a, it's a joke. Oh. Holy okay. shit. Okay, I guess. I guess I could do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a joke. He kind of takes it and kind of haphazardly sticks it under his shirt. Oh, my God. We're really going full ham, aren't we? Okay. Sure, I mean, yeah. Barzer said this as, like, even if we can't identify who it is that's causing the issue, we're thinning the herd, so if they do cause a scene fewer people will be there to be inflicted. It's kind of one of those, like, yeah, it's shitty, but less people will get hurt this way than if somebody actually blows the place. See, and my plan was to just have my unseen servant go around and pester the, the suspicious people on our list. Okay. Sweet. Uh, so, a few minutes go by, and... Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, the guy stumbles out. You see him kind of like drunkenly stumble out into the middle of the room and kind of open up his vest and go, I have a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Holy the person, shit. The people closest to him on the dance floor kind of look at him and go, excuse me, what? And he goes, I have a bomb. And he's like very obviously intoxicated. Um, and, uh, several of the people around him, surprisingly enough, believe him and kind of think that he's gone off the deep end. And so they start calling over guards and pushing people away. And all of a sudden there is a stampede of people running out the, running up the dollar room door and out the top of the, the room. Uh, you see all of the, all of the guild masters and uh, heads of state and stuff are ex escorted out of the building uh, and as they're leaving Tasha and Lavinia kind of give you this look like what is going on Max is gonna uh, hug the wall yeah they're not happy uh, most of the staff is cleared out at this point it is pretty much you and some guards uh, and at this point Mark has not come back yet <laughs> so, the, I can <laughs> both say I had nothing to do with this. I uh, I was doing my ritual casting in the broom closet. As this is happening, uh, 
you see you see somebody uh, a guy kind of run over and tackle him and all of a sudden uh this protective shield magic goes up and as they roll him <laughs> over they hear like crinkling glass and they open it and they see it's just a box of uh like wine glasses <laughs> that were brought in and they kind of they shoot a glare over a bar or um behind the bar uh, Mark, make me a perception roll. Oh boy. Uh, can I take 21? No. So make me a perception roll. Okay. On a 15, you notice it. You, you notice through, through everything crazy going on that uh, you see somebody Do I slip through the, the, the broom closet door. No, you're. You, I, I just assumed that you stepped out with us. But... Well, I mean, like I said, this was. I, I don't know. I gotta finish my original cast. Yeah, I told him, yeah, it was in five minutes, so at least five minutes have passed. Yeah, I mean, it's been like five or ten minutes. So. Does that mean I finished oh. my ritual cast? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So, so, so yeah, as you enter out. the room, and you kind of see all this ridiculous going on, you notice that you see somebody, uh, a hooded figure, slip downstairs instead of upstairs. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. How close to midnight is it? God damn it. Uh, damn it. Like the 11.30ish area. <laughs> but everybody has been cleared out of the the ballroom, save for the guards and some of the wait staff. Have, have I decided that invisibility does not work in here? Or I did don't it just know. not Have you? Uh, <sighs> time to burn another third level. <laughs> All right, so um, I guess I'm gonna go kind of go to an unseen area and go invisible. Okay. Did it work, or can I see myself? Uh, it worked. Okay, I'm gonna follow the hooded figure. You're not gonna let anybody know, or. Nope. Oh, okay. You following? It was a, uh, it was a one man show before these guys. All right. So you you <laughs> follow Dick. down the stairs, <laughs> and uh, the the stairway leads into it, it goes down really really deep, and cuts back and forth over and over again. And there's a at the bottom there's a very long hallway, uh, full of doors on either side, uh, with one that leads straight out to the end of the hallway. And you notice there are a couple of them that are kind of cracked or whatever, but it looks like for the most part nobody's been down here in a while. Okay. And I'm still following the hooded figure? Uh, yeah, you didn't see where he went because he was ahead of you. Why? I mean, he was headed downstairs as you were leaving the door, so you had to stop and cast your spell and then go down so probably like maybe 20 or 30 seconds ahead of you okay if that is this hallway or or, or are the rooms lit by torches um there is a magical light fixture in the top of the um in the top of the hallway <laughs> it kind of gives like a spell white light off I'm gonna have my unseen servant go down and open doors. Okay. So as your unseen servant goes down, do you see what they see, or is it a? Uh, no, I'm just gonna stay within okay. line of sight. I'm just not gonna be directly in front of the door. That way, if there's a trap or something, I don't die. Uh, yeah, he opens the door. Or it opens the doors with no problem. Okay. Any anybody freak out that doors are opened on them? No. Okay. So I still don't know where they are. <clears throat> what if they're invisible too? <clears throat> if only I'd taken dispel magic. There are there are a lot of if onlys going on right now, really. Yeah, I know. Alright, um what time is it? 
is like 11.35. No rooftop blowjob for you. There's a brom threat. The girl's at home, buddy. Just make it make it more. <laughs> Do they? Do they really? Yeah. <laughs> an, ex- an explosive <laughs> finale at midnight. Like, hey. I... I promise you fireworks. Alright, so I guess I'm gonna go back up while being invisible. And I'm gonna go, uh. I'm gonna tell Barzer. Sure, okay. You douchebag, Mark. Velkin, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. That racism, though. That, that casual racism, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just mad at your people. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> You're the reason why I got in so much legal trouble. Hello, Mugen. I'm gonna talk to my cats and try to ignore the fact that this is happening. <laughs> you know, we're, we're only like a team designated. <laughs> Alright, anyway. So, so you said you notified Barzor of what's going on? Yes. Alright, Barzor, how are you going to react to this? Barzor's going to say, well, we got no batteries. Let's go grab the NASA and head on down. All right, um, but I have a previous uh, engagement at midnight. Oh my god! We are here on super important business, and you want to get a handy on the roof. <laughs> I will remind you, all of your uh, weapons and equipment are locked away in the, uh, the coat closet. I magic. The one I'm that you magic, magic in? I know that. Yeah, the one that I magic in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, baby, I'm just gonna magic all over the place. Uh. <laughs> uh. Jesus Christ. Um. I mean, I mean, the, the party's basically over now, right? Yeah. Next, <laughs> next, next is gonna grab her hammer. Yeah, I mean, we we're gonna quit to do that. Okay. <laughs> grab your stuff. Uh, I assume that you would like to head down into the the basement. I mean, yeah, Nax. Okay. Please. Yeah, so you guys head down, and we're back in the hallway that Mark was in, and all the doors are wide open. Oh my God. Nothing's changed. God. So all all the doors have. Okay, um, can I... Nobody's checked any of the rooms. Well, yeah, I was going to say, can I check each of the rooms? Yes. So, as you go down, you notice that there's two rooms on either side. Um, one of them is a, like, a broom club. A little, like, five-by-five room that, obviously, they keep, like, cleaning supplies and everything in. Got it. Uh, there's another room that's a little bit bigger. It may be, like, a, like, a 20-by-20 type area but it's a it's a wine cellar essentially uh the the walls lined with like fancy bottles of wine and uh all sorts of stuff different kind of like fermented alcohols and things like that 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 you would keep kind of at room temperature until it's time to be drunk Mm -hmm. um you go down to the next one and it seems to be kind of an underground like almost break room this is probably where the wait staff is taking their time off during the night or whatever between shifts yeah we never we never got a break we need to call our union yeah well you're not really part of the union (laughs) in fact calling the union would probably get you in trouble anyway i I had to start a palm threat to get a break jesus christ (laughs) anyway uh and then the uh the, the last room is just kind of another supply room. It looks like where they keep all the extra props for different events that they've used, that, um, that they are, uh, there's a, uh, I don't know, there's, a, there's lots of like different things in the room, but it's not a whole bunch of useful stuff, you know? It would be like uh, archways and stuff that looks like wedding decorations and things like that. And then uh, at the far end of the hallway is another 
another staircase that leads further down. It looks as if it gets darker as you descend. And from the bottom of the staircase, you can see a soft blue glowing light. I got that dark vision, baby. Let's do it. Okay. So are you just gonna, gonna barrel down there? I'm gonna, like, go gently. It's a blue light, like a wall of blue light. Like, is it a force field? Like, like as if something is, like, pulsing down below. Not necessarily. Like, you can see light coming from the, the bottom of the staircase. It's just dark. Can I, um, in that case, can I take a stealth roll and, like, gently approach down the stairs? Yes. Plus. Isaac, you better not escape my date. That's an 18. Okay. An 18. The first oh, good God. roll of the day. There are stairs? I'm on, I'm on bad terrain. <laughs> Yeah, I can't stealth work crap. Eh, just, just, <laughs> just let, the, just let, no, just let the goblin take point. It's fine. I'm invisible. It's okay. Barzor, do you want to give us a roll? Uh, I get disadvantage and have movement. Fuck, sure, why not? <laughs> oh, uh, this is gonna be terrible. Please, Nat twenty. Please, Nat twenty. Please, Nat twenty. I've been, I've been rolling so bad. Oh God, what is even is my stealth mod? Give me a Nat twenty, baby. Give me a Nat twenty, baby. Plus two. Do you have a plus two to stealth? He's a centaur! Yeah. That doesn't so, make any sense! So, I got a non-natural 20, but because it's a disadvantage, I get a five. Damn. Okay. Damn it. So, um... You assholes, like, just let me do this. Like, so, could you guys, like, just chill Nat, for a second? Nax kind of looks at you and gives you some hand signals and stuff, and then starts slowly creeping down the stairs. Um... Velkin goes to follow, and the first step he steps on creeps really loud, oh, and the, the monster turns on him and gives him this shh look, like she's trying to get him to shut up. And by the time, uh, <laughs> and then by, by the time no. uh, Barzor gets into the hallway, he, he you hear plopping. Uh, <laughs> do we think about anything before we do it? <laughs> so, but as you go, um. The Nax is kind of watching it, or has rolled sufficiently enough to try to kind of sneak the party in. Um, luckily, when you get to the bottom of the stairs, you notice that uh, there's there's a very long room. It's it's probably like a like a twenty by thirty room, and uh, nope, nope, with nope. with some bookshelves on either side facing or coming into the middle of the room. Um, this looks like another storage room, maybe for like. Uh, documents and stuff, important papers, and then against the back of the wall, you see um, kind of backlit uh, a guy with his hood down and with these white dreadlocks and what appears to be a mechanical looking arm of some kind. Oh no. Um, being lit up from the back uh, by what appears to be a machine that's being built against the wall. Um, it's giving off this blue pulsing light and has this big almost vortex like swirl in the middle of it and crawling all over it are about like six uh little robot looking things oh i know what those things are i know who the guy with the arm is uh, so hey what time is it oh god mark it's important it's important character development how do you know the time if you don't know the time if you had to ask someone else to get the time. The sole person no, 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 no. That has, the sole person that has the watch is the sole person you're meeting, so you can't actually meet with her because you need her to know when to meet her. Oh, Starcross the lovers. Cool it's it's <laughs> it's your it's your Icarusian <laughs> torture. <laughs> Max is going to uh, so the way that these bookshelves are, you said they're against the wall? Uh no, they're they're like uh, at a ninety degree angle to the wall, so they may make, make like a right angle. So and they are full of books, so like you could very easily hide behind them. Yeah, and observe them. that's what Nax is gonna do. I don't know what these fools are gonna try, but yes, that's what Nax is doing. Yeah, so very easily he. Uh... What have you done? Uh, what the? Okay. So, Mark. Uh, very easily, you kind of all just slide up behind one of the bookcases. Um, 
you know, trying to be as silent as possible, and he he seems he very distracted. Oh my god! Can we consult as a party before we actually engage? <laughs> no, you guys are going to lose. So what are you doing? Uh, I rolled reckless magic on the robots. So you're casting flame strike. Flame strike. Yeah, I don't Wizard understand Wizard how this is. This chart is way too long. Yeah, th this is weird. Poison spray. Poison spray. I'm at the top. Oh. Hand trips. Number five is poison spray. Then how does this... Oh, you're casting it as a cantrip. Okay, so you're cast casting it at the bots. Okay, then I need everybody to roll initiative. All right. Yeah. Here we are. I mean, he, he does get a surprise round, though. Don't forget that. Yeah. No, I won't, I won't forget that. Cool. 14 for next. Okay. Uh, what is your... My dex what mod is, is dex 5. Your dex mod is 5? Yeah, 20 dexterity, dog. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Goblins, dog. They get plus 2. So, that is a 3 for Barzer. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god! Dude, I think you need to change dice or something. It's so pretty, though. Okay. But, but no, I rolled a nat 1 on my initiative roll. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Go first. yeah you go last. Uh... So, so Mark's going to get his uh, surprise attack first. And uh, you, you roll cast... Thing. So you cast Poison Spring on these uh, bots. Uh, and roll to see if it hits. Um, what? Right. Is it poison spray? No. Uh... Poison. No, spray. it's not a. It's Ocon. Uh, yeah, he's right. You're not gonna want to. No, and it's only on one of them. So just the closest robot. Ugh. Robots and con saves? That sounds like a good idea. That's reckless you're casting for you. Not, you're not within 10 feet of the first robot. So you have a 30 foot. I could have ran. I have my reason. So you ran past the bad guy in the middle of the room. <laughs> and then I guess I poison sprayed the bad guy. I poison sprayed whoever's closest, dang it, because I have a date. <laughs> Are you. The bad guy. Next Meanwhile, is Bar killing Velkin <laughs> after this. Do you hear me? Meanwhile, Bar is at, like, at least let him have his meeting. Meanwhile, Bar is okay. sitting. Alright, on three guys. One. Two, poison spray! Uh, and then by the time oh. he says three, we're in the no. second round of combat. Constitution saving throw. <laughs> so what does he have to make for constitution saving throw? DC oh, whatever so it is. Uh, well, first of all... Yeah, no, what, no, you have to tell him what the DC is, Mark. <laughs> he has access to it. I want him to tell me first because he rolls invisibly. Mark, in Mark, you have to tell him what your invisible? spell DC is. <laughs> 13. 14. 14. Uh, 14. 14. 14. Hey! God. That's one. So roll your 1d12. So question, since that was a critical fail, can we just kill this guy right now? No. <laughs> no, you sure cannot. <laughs> yeah, like, not to, not to metagame or anything, but you just... Poison sprayed Tezzeret. Do you know who Tezzeret is, Mark? I don't really care. Cool. No. Okay. So you kind of walk up and just up a cloud of gas <laughs> in his face, and he looks at you <laughs> and kind of coughs a little bit and says, "Who do you think you are?" So now it is your move again, actually. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Cool. Alright, so let's roll that D10 again. Don't you have, like, level 4 spells, like, ready? Oh, no, you we're level 5. We're not level 4 spells yet. So 6 is... God, I hate hey, this. Ray of Frost. Just... Ray of Frost. So, let me look up what fucking Ray of Frost does. I think Ray of Frost is a, uh... is a spell attack. Yeah, I think it's range attack. It is a. It is. 
So make that attack. It is within six feet. How do I need that? A range spell attack against a target on a hit, it takes 1d8 cold damage. You have to make a range spell attack. I wonder if it's too late to surrender. Oh shit! Yeah, you hit! That's a crit! God! That's what we've been doing. We've just been saving the good rolls for initiative. Uh, so he takes. And its speed is reduced by 10 feet. Uh, let me do one better. By so 20 feet. He, he, so you, you blast him, and when you, when you hit him, you notice that there's a large buildup of ice around his feet. Um, that kind of seems like you lock him in place. Um, <laughs> the rest doing a man who's sexually frustrated. Yeah, and he kind of, you, you hear this like guttural growl come out of his mouth, and he's like, ah, get them! Oh, that's what I didn't roll for. What is your... Are you dexterity? Okay, so you'll get that. So, um, next up is gonna be Nax. Nax is staying hidden. Fuck this. No, like, good luck, dude. Have fun. <laughs> can, can, can I keep my stealth roll? Like, yeah, I mean, uh, roll stealth again, actually. Okay, uh, I'll take that. Um, boom. Non nat 20. Uh, yeah, yeah so I'm, you're still I'm hidden. Take that one. What a wuss. What a dumbass! Yeah. <laughs> what a Look, man, just because you want a handy J does not mean that we have to throw stealth out the window, all right? <laughs> This is this is this is not like a Will Ferrell movie, man. Like we have we have like consequences for our actions. So yeah, the next up is Tezzeret's turn. Tezzeret is going to make a strength save to see if he breaks free of this ice. Yes, he does very handily. All right, bye guys. He's then going to turn and command the uh, the ser servos forward. Who will take their turn next? Uh, so all six of the servos kind of hop <laughs> off the machine and kind of move up in front of uh, in front of Tezzeret. Uh, they are basically surrounding you, Mark. Now you know how I felt as a DM with all those bears. Bears are what? Uh, what would you like to do? What do I want to do? <laughs> Excuse me. So what would you like to do? Oh man! You said there's six of them and the bad guy. Yes. Um. And no Vanaxa. No. Uh, Nax is officially hiding in the corner. She's supposed to post a book out so she can see through. Oh no, she's she she's reading a book even though she can't read. She, like like real though, free action. Nax will like just hold a finger up to her mouth, just like mm, like let let him fucking reap what he sowed. You don't have to follow that, but that's just what she's saying. Oh, what? Um. Do I do I know this dude? Um, you do not know him. So I don't know. Uh, crap. I think Barza would just be dumb enough to do it. All right, can I get a straight line of thirty feet to him? Yes. Oh my God. Thank you. Well, you uh, between him are the six servos surrounding Mark, so you can get to the servos. And, and Mark. And Mark. But I can do. But you would not line. be able to get straight to him. Okay, no straight line. Okay. No straight line. So I can't do centaur yo yo. <laughs> go for it, buddy. No, Just go. Yo -yo. Is there you any way to position? Yo -yo? Is there any way that I can position in this room that at any point I can centaur yo yo? 
Um, the room is only about 20 feet wide. It's not the biggest room in the world. Um, here's an idea. Here's wide. an idea. Okay, so yeah, not yeah. really. Okay. Centaur Yo Yo, no, not much okay. around me. Just sit Centaur Yo Yo the robot. All right, robot closest to me. We are, go we are going to two-handed, two yeah, two-handed quarterstaff plus one. Okay. That is nineteen. Yeah, that's Okay. Do you want me to do all my attack rolls and then do damage all together, or do attack damage, sure. attack damage? Uh, for these guys, uh, damage all together. Okay. So then I am going to <clears throat> bend the key point for Flurry of Blows. And just so I can do them all the rolls at once. I don't know. And then after, well, okay, I'll do first attack two handed, second attack two handed, and then uh, key point two Flurry of Blows. Well, one Flurry of Blows. Okay. Strike. So, so okay. second, second staff is gonna be a twenty-one. Uh, first unarmed strike will be a fourteen. Damn. Okay. And second unarmed strike will be a fifteen. Oh, three separate attacks. Four. Two. Oh. Yeah. So uh, are those damages or is that for hit? Those are hit. Nine, so okay. 19, All of 20. Okay. So damage is going to be 2d8 and 2d6. You want me to roll that for you or you already got it? I got it. All right. So. And then plus 12 regardless because it's four plus three. Nice. 12. So 12 plus 7 is 19, plus 5 is 24. 24, plus 4 is 28, plus 2 is 30, so that is 30 bludgeoning damage. Okay, so what was each attack for? You said they all uh, hit. Yeah, the I, know. I I just want to hear each one separately. Sorry. Uh, 19, 21, 14, 15. No, I know those hit, but what are, what are the damage? Oh, I'm sorry. seven, seven plus three, five plus three, four plus three, and two plus three. Okay, so you actually hit the first one uh, so hard oh. that yeah, you sorry. hit the second one on the left also uh, in your roll, and those two are smashed against the wall. You basically like baseball bat them out of the way, and then you hit the third one and disable one of its legs. Sorry, so I also actually, yeah, you've uh, taken out two of them, uh, the two closest to you, and uh, wounded another. Okay, add plus two because I, I didn't add the plus one quarter staff damage. I didn't Mark, to hit roll. Mark, are you like eating something? So you, so you just took out three of them. Uh, no, I was solving it with you. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, you're but good. Yeah. The three down. Cool. Yeah. Uh, three down and. Are any in range of hitting me? No, not even one. Okay, I'm still gonna take about ten feet back to kind of reassess okay. that situation. Sure. Yeah, as you come in further, it's like how many of them are there? And he kind of goes, it doesn't matter. Um, next up is Mark. So did they not attack me? No, they had to move into position. Oh, okay then. Alrighty. So, time for the closest threat. That would be actually, ac actually, we're going to cast Mage Armor. How about that one? Okay. Oh, there. Mage Armor. Alrighty. Let's continue. Okay. So, what does that make your AC now? Uh, 15. 18. Gotcha. Okay, uh, so next up is going to be uh, Vinax's turn. Okay, um, so 
between the fucking high society party, between Velkin being Velkin, and between everyone going off and doing their goddamn thing and not like taking it slow, Nax is going to rage. And then okay. she's gonna run up. Can I get to them within forty feet? Yes. All right. Cool. Uh, nearest, uh, nearest little robots. Uh, I'm gonna do my mm-hmm. two attacks. Six, okay. sixteen to hit. Yes. Sick. Uh, so that is thirteen damage and eleven damage. Yeah. So you you just get really angry. Bark, 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 bark. Sprint, <laughs> sprint right past. Velkin and uh, Barzor, and just smash both uh, two more just straight down into the ground. Oh, it's it's like Roxas in the beginning of Kingdom Hearts two beating up the computer. That's that's what's happening here. <laughs> yes, basically. Um, okay, so next is Tezzeret's turn, and he's very obviously not happy. Yeah. Um, he he's like, I can't believe this is happening when we're t- trying to test out. Uh, test out the things uh, for our lord. I, I'll deal with you first. And he kind of just takes his uh, mechanical arm and st- is going to take a swing at um, Vanessa, who just ran up because she's not the closest. Okay. Wait, like, real, like, real talk, are we, like, destroying the security for the people trying to... Har- oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, no. Two twenties. Holy crap, that's a double crit? Jesus <laughs> Christ. All right, go ahead and just rip my character sheet up in half. All right, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll take it. That's fine. That's 11, yeah, so, so 21 total? Yeah, so he's going to take his arm and literally just smash you in the side and then come down on top of your head, basically. All right, cool. Max, like, tumbles and away then, a little bit. Yeah, so with his next move, he reaches his arm out, and it starts glowing purple, and you see uh, two of the servos behind you reconstruct. Oh, boy. Uh, so now it's the servo's turn. Uh, the two, the one in the front that's still around is going to attempt to attack. Uh, he's going to attempt to attack. Yeah, it's going to attempt to attack Vulcan. I bring it on. It, it, it misses? Am I still within Am I still within five feet of this? Like, because we're all kind of stacked up together? Yes. Okay. Um, yes. I'm going to use my reaction to make an attack against one of the... Uh, well, can I? do I have to make it against the... Let me see. Uh, when something... You can, okay, so I have to do it against the attacker. So she's going to swing her hammer... Yeah. For 13 damage at one of the robots. Okay, so you just crush another robot. Oh, yeah. Golf cart. Just um, golf it yeah, out of here. Definitely. And I'm assuming Barzor has higher than a 10 on uh, his AC. That is correct. Yeah, so they both miss as well. Them good horse muscles. Um, and next, it will be Barzor's turn. Okay. Oh, wait, let me... So I took half damage from the 21, actually, because I forgot that uh, I fucking... I get resistance to that shit. Um, yeah, so you probably just took a hit, and because you're angry, you just, like, kind of wall through it. I yeah, guess. so I took 11 instead. Okay, mm-hmm. so if I take a straight... If I take a straight shot to, to the dude, do I invoke opportunity attack? Well, I thought you didn't... You should not. Yeah, I thought you didn't invoke uh, opportunity attacks point, no matter what. Yeah, at well, this even, point you pass... As with my feet, I have to hit somebody first, so I uh, have to. Well, no, yeah, the problem is, is that there are enemies on both sides of you now, so it's kind of like uh, the servos that he reconstructed are behind you, but at the same time, he's in front of you, so uh, I don't know how far back you'll be able to back up once you do. Well, I mean, at this point, I think we're I'm in it. Yeah, so, so I can, but I can get to. Can yeah, get you to can get game. you can get to him. You can sidestep uh, Vel- Vulcan very easily. All right. Go ahead. Um. Fuck. Let's do it. Here we go. 
So I'm gonna run up to him. Same thing. Two two quarter staffs. Gloria blows. So quarter staffs are gonna be. That is a fourteen. And uh, that and that is a crit. So that's twenty seven on a crit. Yeah, the twenty seven is definitely gonna hit. Fucking monks, am I right? Uh, the fourteen does not. Okay, and then the unarmed strikes are gonna be a eight, so that's no good, and a ten, so that's no good. So I just yep. get the crit. Yep. But you get to roll damage twice. So that is let's see, there's seven on the first roll. God damn it. And four on the second roll. Okay. Yeah, we can't all do uh, 30 damage every turn. Yeah, that's fair. So you come in, and you go for two strikes with your staff, and you, you're double arming and everything, but he has this this strange metallic-looking arm that, that looks like it's made of a metal that you've never seen before, and your your staff just kind of glances off of it. Um, How much did you say it was? Uh, seven and four? Seven and four. All right. Uh, so he's a oh wait, sorry. I keep forgetting to add the plus one. So eight, eight and five, so thirteen. Sorry. That's fine. There we go. Uh, okay. So that happens. Uh, Belkin, it is now your turn. Unless you have anything else that you want to do. Uh, the only thing I could really do now at this point is move, and we already said that there's not really room to do that, so. Yeah. I'm good. Mark's gonna roll a nine on this stupid chart that I don't know what it does. <laughs> okay, so I get Thornwhip. Is Thornwhip? I don't even know what Thornwhip does. Oh, it doesn't freaking show up in the spells. You, you, do, you do a whip with a thorn? Or, sorry. It's like, it's like uh, 3d12, I think, damage. 3d12? Really? I thought it was no. like a cantrip. No. no. It's totally 3d12. Definitely not. Thorn with the transmutation uh, spell. Make a melee spell attack <laughs> against the target target. It's um, 1d6 piercing damage. It's 2d6 because he's level 5. And if the creature is large or smaller, you pull the creature up to 10 feet close to you. I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. Well, that sucks. Yeah, reckless um, casting seems like terrible. No offense. It's so fun though. I like it. Yeah, so it's two d six. Okay, so there's the. Uh, the uh, did you make your attack roll? You have to make an attack That's roll for attack. it. It's my attack roll. Sixteen is my attack roll. Oh yeah, so that hits. Okay. I, okay, I, I didn't. Just... I didn't see that. I saw the ten plus six and was like, no, it's. Not. 2d6. It's 1d6. It's 2d6. You're at level 5. We're at level 5 since when? Sit, uh, dude! Mark! <laughs> I'm had a baby. Just remember that. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. I'm trying not to I'm trying not to get on you, but like, dude. So I would have done way more damage now. Yeah, because you just had a higher level spell slots too. Yep. Well, we're not changing that now. <laughs> I'll give you the 2d6, but, uh... Okay, 11 damage. He was too concerned with getting a handy J on the roof to level himself up. You've really been falling behind on your studies, Velkin. <laughs> so unhappy right now. I'm not going to be happy with him when he gets done. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> Okay, so uh, next up is Nat. Um, so you know that you know that Tazarek guy. Yeah. Yeah, Nax is pissed. Um, okay. He's right next to me, by the way. So, me. yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead mm -hmm. and um, do the double attack against him. Um, uh, the first one hits. Okay, so we're gonna do seven bludgeoning. I'm going to use Fury of the Small to add five damage to it, equal to my level, mm -hmm. and then. Also, I get plus two because I'm currently raging. So that is a uh, fourteen total. Thirteen. Fourteen. 
11, 12, 14, right? Jeez. Bark, 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 bark. He doesn't like this one, though. Superman. At this point, uh, you kind of you kind of walk up and smash him in the knee and then smash him in the stomach, and he does not take those hits well. Um, he kind of falls to falls to one knee, and all the wind's knocked out of him. Yeah, I just fucking need a planeswalker. Hell yeah. Yeah. So he's gonna uh, he's gonna stand up again. And he is going to make an unarmed strike against you. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's going to miss pretty bad. Yeah, uh, so he goes to swing and misses and actually ends up smashing one of the servos uh, that's there. Um, he's going to uh, make another attack, unarmed uh, strike against you. Okay. Uh, he's very unhappy, but he's going to attempt to grab you this time. Okay. On a 17. Uh, that ties. It ties, so, uh, you just barely wiggle out of it, essentially. Hell yeah. I'm okay. sh Nax is very compact. Yeah. Uh, next up is going to be the two servers in the back of the room. They're going to wiggle up and, uh, try to attack Bowser again, so that's it. Does my sentinel apply here? Uh, no, because they're behind bars or so. Got it. They are far enough away that they would not be near you. Uh, does a 15 hit? It does not. Well, heck. All right. Uh, next up is Barzar. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, Barzer is going to do uh, two, two quarter staff attack. Mm -hmm. on, on the dude that is a 23 right 16 plus 7 is 23 yeah that's gonna hit okay and the other one would be 15 uh, a 15 also hits cool and then I'm also going to spend a key point to do a stunning strike on him so I need a con save 15 You got exactly 15. So with him, is meter beat on that end? Yeah. Damn it. That fails. If the number is 15, the number is 15. I know. Uh, so damage is 9 plus 8, so 17. Yeah. So uh, you hit him. And actually managed to catch him kind of in the middle of the ribs and then the side of the head. And it knocks him down to the ground. It does not quite kill him. Uh, but he has taken some very serious damage and does prompt him to just all of a sudden scream in rage and shout, Enough! And uh, from him is going to come uh, an attack. Let's see here. Uh, I need everybody to make a... Yeah, just go ahead and make a constitution save. Is this technically uh, count as um, a... Does this technically count as a ranged magic attack? Uh, yes, it will. I, 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 do get, I do get advantage on this because I'm raging, but it doesn't matter because I still roll eight an 8. Reason. Okay, so question on, on Monk Bullshit. Deflect okay. missiles, is it only with ranged weapons, or is it ranged... Yeah, ranged spells are separate, right? Yeah, I'm fairly yeah. certain it's only it's missiles. It's not deflect with ranged spell, unless you have counter spell. Okay, gotcha. Then never mind. What's what's the save? Or what, what am I rolling? Oh, Con, Con save. Con, okay. <clears throat> oh, boy. Let me at least add my health points if that's okay with you. <laughs> that is a five on my con save. Awesome. I'm so glad this went this way. All right. So uh, a wave of death magic is going to explode out of him. Great. Uh, it's going to hit you all. And let's see here. What type of damage does it do? It's going to do necrotic damage, I believe. Heck. Wait. Let me let me double check on totem spirit. <laughs> I still resist it, baby. Yeah, it's not gonna matter. I think 
can do it this way. It's not gonna matter, we're all dead. <clears throat> oh, no, there's no way that's right. No, roll slash R twenty D ten, no space. What? Wait, what? Why the hell? Wait, 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 but but what? <laughs> yeah, so it's it's gonna knock everybody down to one health essentially. Party. Uh, and you're all gonna fall prone. Okay, um what is what is half of one hundred and five uh I guess fireball. I was so close to uh I was so close to almost staying on my feet. But he's he's gonna stand up and he's gonna say if I can't deal with you here, I'll send you somewhere where we won't have to deal with you again until later. Um uh, and he's going to hold up his hand and all of a sudden you're going to feel a force pull you and throw you into uh, the gate behind him that they've built. Um, I would like everybody to roll. Let's see here. No, you don't have to roll for this. So, uh, so all of you are thrown into this gate, uh, kind of forcibly. Um, I say kind of, I mean very forcibly. Uh, and all of a sudden you feel yourselves, uh, it feels like you're shrinking uh, and being crushed infinitesimally in, down into a point until all of a sudden something snaps and you pop back out somewhere else. Um, when, as you start to realize that you're back on ground somewhere, uh, you look up and see a portal in the air close uh, behind you um, and start to realize that you are somewhere very different than where you were before. Um, you look around and you realize there's lots of something that feels very fine. Uh, you, you notice that uh, the ground feels much less steady than it did before. You, uh, you smell salt in the air and you hear what sounds like birds but no birds that you've ever heard before hmm. so we're all we're we're all on like uns, uh, unsteady ground you said yeah okay so, so you you haven't quite come to your senses yet would like somebody like to make a perception roll to kind of figure out what's going on i now have a 22 in perception so sweet Max is so out of it. The hit to the head, really, now that she's not raging, raging just got to her. Uh, Mark, you notice that you're standing, or that you have all landed kind of face down in the sand. Uh, I do have to say, you, I do have to say because she took damage, she is technically still raging. Yeah. Uh, Wait, were we falling? We did fall. We fell. Yes. Keep up, buddy. Come on. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, no, you, yeah. it, there was no time to guess spells. Um, not that kind of fall. So, but, but, uh, uh, you notice that the the soft, un, unstable ground you feel below you is sand. Uh, you look up, and you notice that you are completely surrounded by water. Um, hence the salty smell that you smell. Uh, and the strange birds that you see are, are these white birds flying by with bright yellow beaks um they seem to be tiny and numerous in number and they're kind of just hopping all around checking you out and uh looking around for things on the the beach making these loud, loud squawking noises you gotta uh, like you wouldn't even with a high nature roll you wouldn't know what these are you've never seen them before they're not natural they're actually dead. Um, I've seen them in my dreams. As Nax raises up from the sand, um, she like shakes herself off, like you know, gets sand off of her, mm -hmm. and then she growls at Velkin, and she's gonna let him know what she thinks of Bitch, him. I'll kill us all right now. I will kill us all right now. Look, all we had to do, all we had to do was be quiet about it. All we had to do was not instigate crap. And then we would have been able to return to Lavinia. We would have been able to tell her, hey, there's a big metal man who's in the bottom of the... It's all your fault, you big 
blue bastard. You had to go without us. You had to work like you were some like hotshot cop. You're a beat cop. You hear me? You're a fucking beat cop. You did this all by yourself. You think you can just go waltz around, do everything your way. <sighs> She's still raging, still barking. Um. Uh. Yeah, it, help, help me make a decision. Uh, Mark, high or low? Um, hi. She does her two attacks at Vulcan. Here we go. So you hit me with one. You do realize you're going to kill me, right? Yep. Okay. Just at his knee. Six blood. I'm down. Uh. That's a fail. <laughs> well, to be fair... I mean, I think people have health potions. I have health potions. Yeah, no, like... Nexus is gonna stand. Two fails. Oh god! One suck. I'm dead. <laughs> Mark, listen. Mark, listen. I'm not saying he didn't have it coming. <sighs> And then <laughs> she just oh god I'm gonna <laughs> but NASA and Barzar watch on I... without doing anything <laughs> no basically like have you ever seen the end of have you ever seen like the, the, the high point of Rocky 4 where the Russian dude is like if he dies he dies <laughs> if he dies he dies yeah but is that what Barzar was really saying um Mark, I I really want your opinion on this. Is this warranted? Is this... That's not my thing to answer. Alright, because, like, I understand what I just did. I could... So, so, uh, so you notice as, uh, Vulcan goes to croak his last breath... <laughs> I, I'm so sorry! I... This weird... <laughs> This weird, almost the air around him almost seems to shimmer, yeah, and then I, some, some you strange. Guys, you be careful about what you're doing. Some strange, uh, some strange runes uh, start to show up around him in the air, kind of haphazardly, and it seems like Mark is getting harder and harder to see. Um, you know, whenever you when die in an RPG sudden, and you disappear. When all of a sudden a giant sigil appears above him, a giant triangle with what appears to be almost Azorius rings appears above him in giant orange uh, outcropping. And all of a sudden he is very clearly visible again. He is there. He is stabilized, but he is not well. Uh... How mad would you be if I said... Oh no, you're not well enough to cast a uh, fireball right now. Oh god, uh, you were like unconscious. Not okay. I will be attention. Oh god. Um, Nat, so, God damn it. So Nat, Nax, Nax looks up at Barzor and is. Go ahead. Barzor, I mean, he's gonna go over, grab one of the health potions, like feed it to um. Nax is gonna take the other one and chug it herself. <laughs> You're gonna have to take it off of me. You're unconscious. What are you gonna do about it? As far as they're gonna let you steal from me. I I just gotta. Now um. It's fine. Hey, it's fine. Yeah, Look, it's fine. We we we. we your dexterity thing. I got a good dexterity, dog. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Josh, I'm really... It. Josh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> it only <laughs> has it. Still taking at least 11. Eh. <laughs> sorry. At this point, Barzer wants to take, like, five levels in rogue. Seven. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> with that... Uh... Vulcan's unconscious on the down. beach, but alive. Uh, you all realize that you're kind of 
granted, the more you look around, the more you start to realize uh, you don't really see any signs of habitat. Sarcastic fireball. On us? Um, all of us? All of us. Dear God. Josh had this really elegant... Yeah, yeah, no, he had like this really well done thing. 22. Okay, so you take 11 damage. And then I take 6, because raging. Am I technically in the splash zone? Yeah. Yeah. God damn it. (laughs) That's a nat 20, so 22. Okay, you take 11 damage. Alright, I'm down. Are you yeah, you just cast fireball on us. Just me. Roll. Roll. Right, we're, we're hey, and listen, listen. As soon as he goes down, Nax is going to try and stabilize him. You're down too. No, I'm not. I survived. I drank the health potion, went back up to um, went back up to eight HP. He did eleven damage, which rounds up to twelve, and I get half because I was raging. So I have two HP left. Now listen, no, seriously, she's going to stabilize him to where he can stay unconscious. Can I do that? Yeah. And then she's gonna do the same thing to Barazor if necessary. Like, okay. I, I... So wait, am I still making saves, or am I just unconscious? I guess you're just unconscious. If, if she's gonna save you, then yeah. And um, can can we make like a long rest and just like uh, <laughs> can we just chill for a bit? Uh, yeah. No, uh, well, as you start to notice, uh, Nax, you don't really know what's going on around you, but what you do know is you've never seen anything. In Ravnica, that looks anything like the the place you're currently at. You do not recognize where you're at. Um, And uh, you've never seen a body of water quite as expansive as uh, the one that you see in front of you. You're thinking, wow, that must be a really big lake. Um, Because it just seems to go on forever and ever towards the horizon. Uh, Uh, We're on an uh, island, aren't we? Except she probably doesn't know what an island is. Yeah, doesn't know what that is. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there's no habitat, but uh, Nax, you're just your sense of your your ability to survive on the street kind of just allows you to know that you need a you need warmth, so you need a fire or some kind of heat source. You uh, you need food. You gotta find something. Uh, and you see the birds around, it's pretty easy to trick some of them into coming close mm. enough for you to just squish them with a the hammer. Can, uh, while, while Velkin is unconscious, can she take his arcane focus? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, she's going to do that and pocket it. Okay. Um, sure. As soon as, like, we... She's going to do all this. She's going to, like, get some food and, like, yeah, a fire gun. What? You know what his arcane focus is. That's actually a good point. Uh, can I roll Arcana on that? Yeah. At sure. a negative two. Yeah. No, she doesn't know. It. Never mind. She doesn't do that. Yeah. That's that, that's no that's that's a good point. Um. So while while these guys are unconscious, she's gonna get the fire going, get some hunting going, and then after the long rest, she'll see if they could be roused. I guess. Can I can I do that? Yeah. So you guys take a very very long rest. <laughs> From not only the infighting that you did, but I mean, yeah, everything with Tezzeret before that. Uh, it, it's not like you got hit by a small uh, necrotic spell. Like we're all, you were all feeling the effects, the effects initially, anyway. So uh, now, now, so upon their rousing, Nax with hammer in hand is going to be like. Hey, now, we both did things, we both said things that we might regret. Now, I'm not going to say that one of us was right or wrong, because one of us was definitely wrong, but I'm not going to say that. Uh, But, look, I don't like you, and you don't like me, but if we want to survive, we're going to need all threes of us, because as far as I can see, 
there's no way off of this little uh, this little patch of sand over here unless you get unless you can swim a really really long way. So let's put our heads together and figure this out. All right. And swim a very long way. I don't want to have to smash your kneecaps again. Okay. That's a lie. She would love to. So, a question, just so I can reorient. Yes. What the fuck just happened? Like. Was that a rest? Like, was that technically? Are we long resting, short resting? Am I just gonna be a long rest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're we're, we're good. Okay. Max took care of you guys while we were all out. Okay. Like, I'm still like really confused, but okay, I I I'm, I can do that. While you got so, while you guys were out from the fireball, Max stabilized you guys then went to work over the next basically eight hours getting a fire going getting some food prepared um with like the birds flying overhead and then like basically resuscitated you guys back to whatever passes for health passes for healthy right now and she's basically laying down the law like hey look i don't like you you don't like me i like the horse guy but i don't like you um and we're gonna need to work together and fig figure this out you dig? I will kill so you. So as, you, as with, you're doing this, everybody make a perception roll. Oh boy, my favorite. Also, with this in mind, about how much more do you have, Josh? Like, did we derail everything? Oh, this, this is it. This is okay. This is it. Oh. Nineteen. Okay, I mean, that, because I was like, if this is gonna be like a long, long more time, like I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty disgusting. <laughs> That's eight perception. Okay, uh, that's enough, actually. Uh, so uh, weirdly enough, all uh, all of a sudden you notice a uh, a boat <laughs> off on the horizon. Uh, and as it gets closer and closer, you notice that it is very large, and it's actually like a a like three masted ship. Um, Damn. and all of a sudden you see a tiny little dinghy come out from it as it starts to get closer to shore. And um, you can see as it gets closer, there is an assortment of people and um, in the boat of different species. There's like a goblin and some humans and uh, like one minotaur in the boat. I've got fireball. <laughs> and they all seem, they seem to be approaching very specifically your portion of the beach. They're probably out of range of a fireball currently. 150 feet. Why are um, we casting fireball? Oh god, our one way. God, no. I'm fine. I'm amphibious. Why are we? Why are we you, fireballing? Amphibious. Yes, I am. Just because you're blue doesn't make you amphibious. What? No fight me now. Why are we doing this? I, I just want to know why we're doing this. Because I was murdered? Um, so you're attacking strangers? Yes. Oh my god. Um, you cast fireball, uh, fireball on the boat. Uh, all of a sudden you see somebody from the back of the boat stand up and cast a spell and the magic is dispelled. She's gonna kneecap him. Like, stop being a dick. <laughs> like, to his hammy. Like, to, like twenty three. Stop it. Just that again. She she's going to like basically. You know how whenever someone hits you from the back of the leg in that little dead zone to like get you to kneel down, yeah. she's doing that with her hammer. <laughs> so does he yeah. still have that, like? Does he still have that sigil over his head? Like, he's is he walking with like an, like a an RPG marker over his head still? No, oh. no, that faded a few minutes after uh, the incident. I just pictured him walking around. I just pictured him walking around like a fucking Sims character. God, no, she's doing this just to make a point. Like, chill the fuck out. These people are here to save us. Presumably. I don't need saving. We can keep doing this, Mark. We can keep doing this. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah so, so the, the people are now on the boat and draw weapons and surround you. Hey, take this guy. He's the one who threw the fireball at you. Like, whatever. And you hear uh, one of them step forward and go, I don't know why that was called for. He's an asshole. You should throw him off the plank That's, or whatever you do. Uh, it's not every day that you see uh, ye stranded people uh, attacking ye sabers. Yeah, tell him that. Being stranded out here in the middle of the ocean seems like a rough time, but uh, I guess if you want, we can just run you through and then take your stuff and then leave. We're on our way on a, like a on a different party. quest anyways. Thought we'd stop and see what we could help with. At this point, Chief, like, take him. He's got some cool fancy stuffs on him. He used to be a cop, you know? And he kind of eyeballs y'all and he goes, oh, you're not from around here, are you? You ever heard of rat? What part of Ixalan you be from? What the heck's in Ixalan? We're from Ravnica. You know, Ravnica? Like, where in Ravnica are we? We in Gruul territory? They don't really like water very much. And the people kind of look at each other and go, Funny, uh, how long you been out here baking in the sun? It's, uh, been about eight hours. You're not making a whole lot of sense. What's up, Ravnica? The, the city, you know. The, the whole world is Ravnica, you know. The the everything is Ravnica. Is is plane hopping like common knowledge? No, it is very not common knowledge. Okay, cool. Yeah. No, nah, like, what do, you, what do you mean Ravnica? That's the whole world, dummy. Uh, he goes, are, no, the only city that be in these parts is, uh, Damned <coughs> fort made by the uh, those damned vampires. Uh, what the hell's a vampire? What the hell? What do you mean the only city? Everything's uh, a city. Vampires are Every, everything is one city. That's that's the whole thing. That's Ravnica. Look around you, boy. You're in the middle of the ocean. I ain't There's a boy. No city for miles. I need to sit down, and I'm the name's next. I ain't a boy. The other goblin kind of goes, ha ha, I could, ha ha. You should have voiced the fucking goblins in WoW, dude. You, you would have been great. The goblin, the goblin is very short and stout and bright red. So it kind of looks nothing like the goblins from Ravnica. Got it. To be um, fair, that's, that's, yeah, that's the first, yeah, I was going to say, I knew he was different because that's the first goblin without a, like, Boston accent. Yeah, um, so he's he's very loud and rambunctious, just like a normal goblin, but he's got like a weird kind of like scrappy beard, and he's very like stout face and shorter ears. Mm -hmm. um, he looks almost more like chimpanzee like than actually uh, goblin like. He's like, hey! got it. Hey, where are we gonna take the bus? Hey! <laughs> He goes, oh, don't mind old scrappers over there. He, he's mostly harmless. Yeah, what about you? How harmless are you? Er, I'd be uh, just a modest captain of me ship. Uh, we're, we're in search of uh, some treasure in these parts. Uh, and we're always looking for willing or, uh, you know, at this point, unwilling help. At this point, Barzer has one of his legs tucked up with a piece of wood and an eye patch on. Like, oh, yeah. He's like, yeah. he's already on the boat. One of the guys, so Barzer is kind of standing there, and one of the guys is like, Oi, boss, what's, a, what's this thing here? What kind of monster is that? And they're like, Arr, son, do you have a, some kind of did something? Uh, did one of them merfolk cast a spell on you or something? You look like you got fused to a horse. Uh, no, this is... Uh... How I was born. I'm a centaur. Uh, never heard of that. Uh, I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> this whole campaign <laughs> has just been Josh building up to hit, being able to do a pirate voice. Uh, I'm also playing Gangplank's theme, by the way, just so, so you know. Um, so he's going to look at you and be like, 
Alright, well, uh, you see, this is a, this here's a tiny island, and, uh, I'm not sure how long you three will make it out here, uh, especially with the, uh, seeming hostilities that seem to be running amok. Yeah, buddy, but look. If you were willing to come with us and, uh, throw in some help and maybe some gold on the back end, we could, uh, see ye off this island and then, uh, back to wherever this, uh, Ravnica is. Yeah, buddy, look. You're better off just killing us now. No, nah, yeah, buddy, look. Um, I'll go with you. I'll hoist whatever you want. Uh, I really suggest leaving this guy here. Blue guy? Yeah, no. Uh, b big hindrance. Been basically a big pain in my ass since the whole thing. Yeah, yeah like, you know, kind of a racist, too. Like, it... it... He's, gonna, he's gonna eye Velkin up and down and go... Arrgh. Uh, and kind of look at the Minotaur that they brought with, with them. And he's gonna go... Tie him up! Bring him with us. Strip him of everything he has. Hey, if he resists, uh, I'll hit him for you. Yeah, so the the Minotaur is going to shove Velkin onto the ground and uh, bind his hands. You going you gonna to roll those rolls? Uh, yeah. The bar throws one willingly. He's just like, fuck this shit. Yeah, Nax is like already... She, she's got her hammer out. She's going to see how this goes, but like... Also, like... She's eyeing that boat. She's like, oh, hell yeah. It's no, a 24. Bars is not even, like, drawing weapon. Like, his weapon's still, like, draw. Like, he's not even holding it. He's just like, fuck it. I'm dead. He's a very large minotaur. He, uh, shoves you onto the ground and binds your hands. And he's going to, uh, basically take everything on your, on your person. So that you can't do anything. Just gonna take my clothes too. Hell, um, not your clothes. He'll leave you with your clothes. But he's going to empty all of your pockets and all of your things, and patch you down and everything. Uh, and they'll they'll go. All right, come with us back to the boat, and we'll uh patch you up, I guess. Uh, there, on what we're not to. Th there are any boats on Ravnica, Josh? Like, I, I assume they have some bodies of water. Boats? I mean, there are boats, but it it's like lakes. Yeah, um, yeah. And like, what what about like seen, or like rivers running through the area? Right. You've never seen a body of water water this large. What what about it like expands past the horizon? What about like an airship? Like, do they have airships on Ravnica? Or is that more of a? a they uh, do not. Okay, just curious. That's that yeah, more of a Kaladesh um, thing. Yes, uh, it's a technology that could, probably could show up on Ravnica, but I don't I don't think. A lot of the air travel for Ravnica is based on uh, creatures, like flying creatures. Okay. So there are like drakes, and there are there are a couple dragons, but not a whole lot. And they're not tamed, but there are griffins. Basically, what I'm going jacks. yeah. Basically, what I'm going for is like if Nax knows what a boat is, like real shit. Yeah, she knows what a boat is, but she's definitely never seen one this big. Got it. That's all. That's all I need to know. She's she's getting on the boat. Hell yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, you get on the boat, and they're flying black sails and everything, you know, big comical skull and crossbones on them, uh, and they're gonna set off, and with that, uh, we're gonna wrap up Ravnica Night and start, uh, our adventures in Ixalan. Hell yeah! High seas in Ixalan, fuck yeah! Yeah, dude. Um... You want? Would you like to do the round the table thing so we can all <laughs> come down from these emotions? Yeah, I guess we gotta blow off some steam. Uh, Mark, do you want to start, buddy? Seems uh, like he won't upset here. No, I'm not upset. Yeah, I figured Mark wasn't upset. He he knew what was happening. Yeah, it's just every day from now on, I'm going to cast fireball on the bottom of the ship. <laughs> We've yeah, got. You are never leaving the brig. Uh, by the way, I'm super legal now. Wait, oh what? God. Wait, you do what now? I'm neutral evil. Oh, God. Alright, like it. Love it. Um. So, um, yeah, do you have anything positive to say to any of to any of your fellow players? Why is there going to kill me? So that's goblins now? Wait, say that again? Uh, I'm even more racist towards goblins now? Yeah, I guess. Whatever. 
Baby you, 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 you were like exactly the fucking like baby boomers that don't understand why like black people don't like them. <laughs> oh man, not you, Falcon. Like, please, like I understand. Um, oh yeah, no, and I blame you too for making me miss my date. Oh, well, everything's your fault. <laughs> I hope you hope you have another character ready for Ixalan, my man. This is this is how it's gonna be. Um. So I'm gonna remind you if you really are gonna play an evil character in a, a, a like a good leaning party. We're not good leaning. I'm pretty sure we're like. I, mean, I know, but like, it's like pretty neutral right now. We are like solid you, neutral. Evil doesn't mean stupid. So I mean, like, it's pretty nuking, neutral. We just killed each other. Nuking the boat in the middle of the ocean is probably not a smart idea. Not something an evil character would do. Why not? Uh, because, like, you still care about survival. You still care about... I will be okay. <laughs> In any case... Um, oh, God, fuck this shit. Nah, Nax was, like, trying to end what she saw as a threat. That can still be chaotic neutral, whatever. Um, I will go to say that, uh, Isaac, I really respect that you tried to do something that was uh gonna shake up the the whole deal and to be fair it really did the the the, the mind control spores did do some shit that got us to where we needed to be so i mean you know props to that hell yeah and kudos to mark for sticking with his shit even though it was the pursuit of a rooftop hand job <laughs> could have been more than that we'll never know now God. Uh, honestly, like, I'm like, I'm kind of curious if we actually ended up where we were supposed to. Like, I, I, I like, like, real talk. Was the guy? Well, no, I don't even know, but I'm gonna know. Never mind. But yeah, no, it was uh. It definitely didn't go the way I was thinking, and I, you know, it was pretty, like, solid ending, like, definitely was, was surprising. Yeah, so there's still some secrets and stuff, um, but there is, I mean, we're, we're not necessarily done with these characters, mm -hmm. I mean, like, Mark will let them live long enough or not. Um, well, Velkin will not live just uh, saying. There's already, there's already been some secrets, these. Uh, depending on how well you know your magic lore. Um, but, like, uh, real, like, real talk, I'm like 95% sure at this point that we just attacked an innocent man and he was just defending himself. Like, we didn't get the right guy. Can, can I, can I, can I meta? Yeah, you can meta. Yeah, no, Tezzeret's an evil jackass. Uh, Tezzeret is like Nicol Bolas' number one right-hand man. Okay, I feel a little bit better now. Because as we were doing that, I'm like, oh shit, what if this wasn't the guy we're supposed to be hitting? Like, and, like, I didn't... The reason why I was, like, having Max stay behind is because she didn't know that. Yeah. Why she wasn't attacking at first. I will say giant evil-looking portal in the bottom of a Gala Hall, probably, uh... <laughs> probably a fairly good sign that, uh... He's evil, but that's fair. Blue isn't a very evil color, but I know what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, cool. Adventure Zone Exelon. Uh, you have any last words before we cut? Oh, um, yeah, you have any last words before we talk about uh, Starfall? Um, I mean, it was fun. I like that I get to kind of run this, like, shorter um, campaign, and I like the idea of them staying kind of shorter, you know? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with a little. I'm not the most experienced DM in the world. So. Yeah, we all got work to do in our own ways, dude. I had fun. I think that's what's important. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little worried that the party's trying to kill each other now. And how they DM around that. Only two thirds are, and, like. Yeah, no, Barton's first little sitting back there, like, <laughs> back there, like, oh god. He's, like, yeah. Uh, like, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you at ease. Okay, real quick. I'm not trying to kill the party. He's trying to kill everyone. Trying to kill everyone. Yeah, well, pretty self-destructive way so far. Uh, but anyway, um, 
so that was my everybody wanted to do dragon heist so let's do dragon heist um the cool thing about ixalan and i guess looking forward is uh ixalan is an adventure themed world based on essentially two things there are pirates like it's open seas lots of sailing think uh, Assassin's Creed 4, Pirates of the Caribbean, and there are dinosaurs. Hmm. So there will be dinosaurs in the next campaign. Hell yeah. Uh, so, hell yeah. Totally legit uh, question. Like, real question. Yes. Can, can I forgo the magical savior Azorius bullshit and just say Belkin's dead? What? No, that's, that's lore important. Why? I mean, yeah, I mean, like, if he, if, if Mark wants to roll another character because he, like, because Velkin's out, like, whatever. I mean, you can bail on Velkin, but I can get not like, I just, I didn't know if that was just to, to spare my feelings or anything. I'm not a tech. No. Oh, don't ever feel like you have to think that. Okay. No, 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 it's a little thing. Um... Right. No, Josh told us from the beginning, like, if we die, we don't roll new characters, like, there's something behind it. Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> That's my no, I In a normal campaign, I would have let you just roll a new character, and we would have added you back in, but this is a special little situation. Um, so, if you want to nuke the boat, I guess nuke the boat, but... We, we've, we've got an entire... Um, he's in the brig for now. We can rest with that. We've got an entire uh, DM round. Am I tied up in the brig? Or do they, do, do they just put me in the brig and untie me? No, they got you oh, tied no, up. They, tie, they let you tied up. Easily. You, you cast Fireball on them, dude. They're not untying you anytime soon. But they took all my stuff. Yeah. Bar, right. Bar, so he's, tucked in all four. he's tucked in all four legs and now all four peg legs. So <laughs> They've got you, like, the mask goes all the way through the bottom of the uh, brig. They've got you tied to a post in the brig. Like, that's fine. Look, like I said, we, we've got we've got an entire, uh, like, round of adventures to go through because it's Isaac, then me, then Mark again, and then we'll be back at Josh. So that's several months from now for him to decide what he wants to do with Falcon. Um, that's fine. Feel, uh, that's fine. Speaking... That's fine. Go ahead. Just long enough for me to, when it comes back, I'm be, and then like my anxiety hit back. Oh shit, what's gonna happen? Yeah. So speaking of which, um, seeing as this is the last episode of Ravnik and Knights before we go into Excellent Adventures or whatever you want to call it, um, I'll come up with a better name than that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, the next one uh, is going to be uh, Isaac's going to be taking over, being the last in our DM rotation. So finally, all of us will have been DMs. Um, and your little deal is going to be an original world, a kind of like monster hunter-y kind of brave new world thing. Uh, and it's Starfall. G give me the official name of it again. Uh, I'm working on, I'm revising it a little bit, but right now the working title is, uh, Journey Through Starfall Pass. Got it. Um, yeah, and we're, uh. We're, we're playing a host of colorful characters, which I do not believe have been finalized yet because Mark changes his mind every day. Um, love you, buddy. Um, I'm going to be playing a Dragonborn Oath of Conquest paladin. His name is Oren. Um, Oren Grigori. Prince Oren Grigori. Uh, Josh is going to be playing a human uh, death cleric, you said? Yes. Um, named... Uh, what's his name? I made this file kind of randomly in another little time account. <laughs> and find it. also, oh, yeah, it's fine. And then, uh, uh it's Diana Nordstrom. Oh, we're gonna have a, another female character. Finally, I'm not gonna be the only person playing a female character. That's good. Um, and then, uh, Mark is going to be playing, um, a. Well, I know he's playing some kind of rogue based around potatoes. 
No, I'm playing. I'm playing the Dragon Ball Paladin. Oh, you <laughs> asshole! <laughs> you dick. So um, yeah, the next. No, uh, so yeah, the next time we uh we all get together, we'll be doing a journey for journey through Starfall Pass with a, uh, with that yeah, with a uh, with Isaac at the helm. Possibly the most experienced DM out of the four of us. Uh, maybe. I don't know Sweet. about that. Stumbled over my words before session. Nah, oh, you're fine. You did fine, Doug. Oh, yeah, that was fine. I can tell how much you love Ravnica through doing all this. I don't know. My notes are, you know, seven, so. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, um, does anyone else have anything to add before we cut it? Yeah, mm -hmm. eat the potato bowl. It's such a thing. God. Alrighty, so this is, uh, yeah, this has been Ravnica Nights. Uh, peace out, future us, and anyone who else who listens to this. Uh, yeah, and we'll catch you in Journey to, Journey Through, or Journey to, whatever, Starfall Pass. Woo!